Guys, intro time. Wait, which intro? The wisdom check. Oh, good. Wait, no. I thought we were keeping the old intro. What's wrong with the old one? People like that one. It was too long. Yeah. Too many fucking gifts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But can we keep the part where I yell <gasps> more? Oh, no. 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 But it's the intro to end all intros. I got like what? Two lines last time? Do you want more lines, Tim? Well, no, not really. <laughs> In a world without answers. Uh, yeah. Wait, do you want to start with that? Here we go. Exactly like last time. Wait, OK, so we're doing the exact same way. Let's start with Smoky Bar. No, yeah. no, it's a new season. We have to have a new intro. More. Yeah. Not sure why we thought this would go any differently. Oh, well. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the Wisdom Check, where Jeff and Dustin welcome a guest every week to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. Welcome. This is ridiculous. I'm starting the stream now. Wait, wait, where's my die at? Well, we can't start until I botch. and It's not an intro unless I'm botching. You're on. And we're on. Hey, hey. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome. It is the Wisdom Check once again, everyone. Welcome to all of you in the chat. Glad to have you. I am Jeff, as usual. Across the way from me is Dustin. He was typing out our last minute I stuff am there. Typing a few links out here, <laughs> and we will be just with you in a second here, Jeff. I'm done, I promise. I only got 42 Discords I'm in. Like, it's it takes a while. Okay? All right. <laughs> the number just gets bigger all the time. It's. And we are joined tonight uh, in between us with one of those places we like to uh, to go get support from and that's our buddy who's here really early on with us on our first ever time having a guest and that is matt chowson and he's number one ready to rock it with us tonight he is going to be talking to us a bit about what's been going on in his world and uh with his groups that he's a part of and uh, a lot of the groups that we we touch base with here and there and have a great time with we're also going to be talking about some uh ips we'd like to see games for and what we would kind of like to do with those things. So that's going to be a fun conversation later on. But uh, yeah, Air, Air Laser is wanting to know, who is this? Who is this magical person? Here was he, though? <laughs> was he? Yeah, I was number one. You never forget your first Air Laser. That's, that's that right. That is fact. That was <laughs> a little, little fun history. Three. I, I admit with uh, Matt and Chuck and the people over at Notorious DMG, and I had uh, started watching their shows when we started doing the streaming here. And when me and Jeff decided we wanted to do this podcast, I said, hey, I got some people I'm pretty sure I could get to come on the show. And Jeff was kind of like, oh, I don't know. We should just do the show, me and you. <laughs> and so for the first two episodes, me and Jeff did it just me and him. And then by episode three, I finally got him to be like, let me bring Matt on. And we did. <laughs> and we've had a guest pretty much every week since then. There's been a few we haven't. We're and they got a good idea. Week, they're like, hey, it, Matt, it, you it, think maybe you can come back? You know, we weren't going to have you. <laughs> yeah, it's only been 18 months, so we, we'd like to have months. you come back and talk about what's been going on since then. Yeah, there's been a lot that's happened. We've had two Gen Con, sort of, and uh, <laughs> we got to hang out for a day. Like, there's been a lot that's happened since then. <laughs> sure has. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's get some people caught up, because there are some people in our uh, their chat nowadays that weren't around for the first time. They were coming back through here with you. So um, they probably have seen you on the YouTube back in the day, but we're all different people at this point in our lives. And uh, we started to be 18 months ago. So <laughs> what's what's when, what's new over there in the, in the world of uh, internet goodness? Well, well, like I said to you guys before we went live, they said, what, what's, what's been going on since we talked to you last night? The world's gone to shit. Which is, <laughs> it has. The it's world has gone to shit. That's what's happened in 18 months. And it seems to be getting worse, but uh, let's get away from the real world. We're here to talk about games. Let's forget about all that nonsense. <laughs> uh, what's been going on with me? Wow. Um, so when I was on here last, Dustin actually reminded me, I was still doing my own channel at Jow Zam's Den that I started off. And uh, I was asked around that time to come over to uh, the Swinehander channel and kick off and start and launch their Twitch channel. So I said, sure, Daniel, I'd love to. So I went over there and we started running Swinehander and all my other games picked up over there. And uh, we gained a partnership over the, the course of the 18 months, which is uh, pretty exciting, pretty awesome uh, to achievement. have that going on. And um, we've kind of fine-tuned the channel to be the home and hub for Zweihander. And I know Dustin's doing Zweihander over here. Sure I've is asked, true. <laughs> I've begged him, I've pleaded with him, please come over and run Zweihander on our channel sometime, because he runs a good game. He runs a he mean does. game. 
I'm in that game. Yeah, he's trying to kill me. Jeff's in Jeff's learning firsthand just how mean I am. And (laughs) I'm making believers out there in those Whitehander channels that I might be one of the meanest GMs to run under. So (laughs) it's not wrong. (laughs) Much more forgiving than I am. So I had I have I I haven't killed it. Well, con games I've killed people, but Mm -hmm. like ongoing games i haven't killed a player yet i don't think which is like crazy because it's supposed to be such a deadly game i don't know how like his kill count fun fun fact i've killed zero players my players have kill counts on other players that are tremendously high (laughs) (laughs) it's all the deaths in my games have been by the hands of other players on themselves i haven't killed a single player character yet they do it to themselves (laughs) it's not as easy as the game claims, because I've tried. Don't get me wrong. It's hard. I've, I've tried really hard to kill my player. Like, <laughs> you got me. You killed me. I did. I That's the most you. important death of all. You killed Miguel. Oh. Miguel died. You killed me. I did kill Miguel. And I killed uh, Leopold's character as well. It, yeah, two died in our all enemy right. within oh campaign. You got that. two in that one. So, I mean, yeah. it happened. It's my hand. In like... I've been running it for <laughs> two years plus. Like, on my between my own channel and coming over on my hander. I have not gotten kills outside of enemy within yeah time. Okay. on con games but they don't count it's, yeah. it's, those are meat yeah. grinders yeah. you get to die at the end <laughs> got to you gotta you gotta have the full arc in one session you know right but so <laughs> but he survived whole times you played it twice didn't you to me yeah you played chateau twice i've survived it twice you didn't get me yeah. the time so i've never killed i haven't killed you in that one that's the meat grinder. no that's the meat grinder and you haven't killed me in that one yet i survived it two times i'm very proud of that I'm trying to think. I don't know if that I've killed Dustin in any game, really. Have I? I'm, I'm a survivor. I don't die much. Nope, nope. I killed the great Sir Armstrong. Oh. The boar took him out, if I remember correctly. So that, that there is one. And I've had characters die. Levi Levi kills my characters. But I don't. I, no one else. Yeah, Levi kills me somewhat frequently and recently. <laughs> Which is funny because you never think of Levi as a as a killer DM, but no, he's still no, he, no. all my characters go down in a blaze of glory in in D anD D games. So they all do. I'm not living up my title. Remember when I was on Chasm's Den? It was the Grim Streamer because like on yeah, wins, I was killing at least a player every week. Yeah, you were, and I was watching it. Yeah, was there. that's when you found me, wasn't it? You were watching yeah. Forbidden Lands. I was watching was Forbidden Lands. Lands. You watching? You and killed everyone but Leopold the Just character every, every week. week. Like. It was just yeah, like someone, someone died or was horribly maimed. Or resurrected and then killed again. Yeah. And, and um, <laughs> I haven't been doing that. I need to get back to some Forbidden Lands. It's honestly one of my f- most favorite games ever. Like, for a fantasy mm-hmm. setting, it, 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 it ticks all the boxes for me. Like, if I were to run a fantasy game of my choosing, it would be Forbidden Lands for we'll a long, another long campaign. It, it, what, was what neat, it, it was a neat it was a neat system. I liked watching it. I kind of learned a little from watching you guys run it. And it, you, guys, you ran it kind of like a hex clear. Yes, which, it's I, a heck- which is how it's it's designed. So it's yeah. a little different design philosophy than games we usually play. But uh, interesting. Yeah, so it's old school in that regard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you got the the castle or keep building as part of it as well mm-hmm. from those old school mechanics. So when you you know you've gone so long, you want to build a stronghold. You're going to go back there, and you're going to hire people to to live and work at your stronghold and make money for you. We never got that far. They were just getting mm-hmm. ready to build a stronghold when we when we when we axed that game. Um, but have you played any of the Year Zero games, Jeff? No, no, Year I haven't Zero. had a chance. I, I've, we've talked a little bit about with some of the guests, but I haven't actually had a chance to play any. Yeah. So, like, it, it's a cool concept. Like, I think we were looking at, um, there's a beta occurring with Fallout IP that may be using a similar structure. No, it's I, I, I also got in on that. It's, it's a, that's the 2D20. Okay, so I don't know anything what I'm talking about then. <laughs> okay, it's slick. It's a slick system. Alien uses it. Forbidden Lands, yeah. Coriolis, Year yeah. Zero. It's probably like my, it's my my personal favorite game engine. Um, it's just D6. You roll D6. is the only things that matter are sixes, sixes and ones, and that's it. Huh. And then yeah, you can okay. always kind of push your luck. There's a push mechanic in all of their games, and by doing so, you get to re-roll your dice. But the trade-off yeah. is something yeah. bad always happens because it's always yeah. a risk versus reward. Okay. And, and, and players can't help themselves. They will always push. And especially <laughs> right. if you get someone in like the, me in the chat that's yelling push the whole time when they're trying to debate it. And then, right? Then they do it. <laughs> that's fair. That's oh. fair. Yeah, those are, so, those are an interesting system. It's really simple then. It, it is, is simple. Mm-hmm. It is. I was going to say it's simple but deep. But no, it's, yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> it's pretty simple. They all have their own little nuances to them. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, Like aliens introduced a stress mechanic. So stress builds as you're making way through and you're seeing and dealing with horrific things. Uh, Forbidden lands, all of your your abilities as a class, you can't Mm -hmm. use them until you take damage. You have to take damage. Then you gain these these points that are currency you can cash in to use your class abilities. Uh, Mutant Year Zero, whenever you use your mutant abilities or powers, there's always a chance they're going to go crazy and 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 spike and you'll lose them or you'll gain new ones like it's risk versus reward in all of their right. games mm-hmm. that's what draws me to i love it I yeah love it. I, i'm the same way those are the kind of systems that always draw me into like well i think those sorts of things are important because like why hinder does that and what you're describing there is is doing it but like the stress element or the uh, you know peril or whatever like those concepts like i think are hard for players to just do on their own right like when you say like yeah. hey flinch when an explosion happens be t- behind you instead of walking away like a cool guy you know like yeah. <laughs> no i'm not doing that i'm not gonna make that decision well okay right. well, here's a mechanic that says <laughs> it may happen that way you know <laughs> you, just, you dang like hearing from them they can't say no like i was running alien on the weekend and like mm-hmm. one of the guys is supposed to be playing the badass of the squad everybody else is supposed to fall in line he's gonna show him what's done he goes in there rolls his first tack to miss i'm like you want to push it he's like of course i do <laughs> of course i want to push it i'm the badass i gotta show this guy to push what to it. do Okay. <laughs> All right, push your roll. Let's uh, let's see what happens. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I, I know air laser cool guys don't look at explosions, but we shouldn't all just be cool guys by default, right? That should be right. an achievement, right? Otherwise, it's like everyone's a cool guy. That's not cool. <laughs> yeah, that's not cool. and that's not fun for games. Yeah. I don't think it's fun, but uh, I think other people disagree. So, but uh, so yeah, you, I think it's cool. Get, so you you've been running on Zweihand RPG for quite a while, and. Now you've gotten to the point you got so many games going and so much going on the channel that you you you've got a second channel now that you're branched out. Just channel. So branched when out. I came on board, like I mentioned previously, I was running all my other games still. So I was doing like I don't know Call of Cthulhu and Forbidden mm-hmm. Lands and all kinds of other stuff at the time. Uh, and over time, over the course of the eighteen months, made a decision like we're going to make this the home for Zweihander. So we said we'll cut out the other stuff. We create a sister channel. So for those who aren't aware, Grim and Perilous Studios was the, the game studio that was started, you know, in Daniel's basement and worked on and helped create and shape um, Swihander. Mm-hmm. So I'm now a part of Grim Perilous Studios. And we said, well, we want a place where we can play other games. We can stream video games. We can do Q&As. We can do whatever we want. So we created twitch.tv slash Grim and Perilous Plays. And that's where all these other games are taking place. We're doing Alien right now mm-hmm. uh, on Tuesday nights. Tomorrow night at 9 cool, p.m. Actually. Central Standard. I'm going to do a plug. Tomorrow night. Yeah, go for it. 9 p.m. Central here. Standard Time. Come on over to uh, twitch.tv slash Grim and Perilous Plays. We're going to be doing Alien. It's been ongoing. It's been a blast. It's the newest adventure. I think mm-hmm. it it hits print this fall, and I've been running it off the PDF. So we're the first ones running this brand new adventure. And oh, um, really nice. if you played their first published adventure, it was essentially like Alien. You're on a ship. It was, it was, you're a crew. It's yeah. you're not really skilled at weapons or anything like that. And you're just trying that to was survive. Chariot of the your, Gods, right? Chariot of the Gods. Yes. Chariot of the Gods. For those who haven't seen it. This new one, Destroyer of Worlds, is aliens. You start your squad of marines. You've got smart guns. You've got rocket launchers. You've got grenade launchers. You've got pulse nice. rifles. And you're being unleashed into this colony, which is like on the brink of war. Mm-hmm. And there's, of course, the threat of aliens. And uh, you you have all the bills and whistles. You have an APC, just like aliens. You start with, you know, a big armor tank that you're driving around the colony in. So it's the complete opposite, just like the movies. And mm-hmm. it's been a lot of nice. fun. And I'll say it's it's a different game uh, completely when you're you're playing Marines versus like oh, space sure. jockeys or whatever, space truckers or whatever you want to call right. them. <laughs> so, but they do feel like the movies. Oh, 100 percent. 100 percent. They nailed nice. the tone. So what is it that they did in particular you think is really capturing that? That stress mechanic that I mentioned earlier, uh, uh-huh. they, they implemented really well. It, it amps up over time as the way it goes. So whenever you push your roll, you mm-hmm. gain a stress die. And it goes in your, your pool of dice that you get to roll. And there's one success pip on it, and there's mm-hmm. one pip that has a face hugger on it. If you roll and you get that face hugger on any roll, mm-hmm. you then need to roll a panic check. And these things get worse and worse and worse as you gain more stress. So the way it works is you roll a d6 and add your current stress level on there okay. and it's you know from as little as you know you drop your weapon you get twitchy to you open fire on your 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 friends the people around you and it it just wow. it just amps up it just keeps going every time you see one of those things happen 
you get into the stress. There's so many triggers, like uh, if, if a friendly opens fire on you, which is inevitable when you're playing alien, uh, you get a stress. If you push your roll, you get a stress. You fire full auto, you get a stress. Uh, oh, wow. okay. You see some strange alien creature, you get a stress. So it just keeps amping up. And that's what I find nails the tone and the mm-hmm. feel of the movies more than anything else. And it has going for it. Nice. So like, is it also things that like clues that there's something nearby? Like say, if you found like the skin of like a face hugger in a room, you know, there you're are. picking it up, you're like, what in the heck is that? Like, okay. So, so that's so cool. The, Charity of the Gods has things like that. Like you can do, uh-huh. and you can do the classic like motion scanners and see mm-hmm. blips and you freaking out. But the Charity of the Gods is very much like a, a whodunit. You're making your way through and you're finding these things. You're finding the eggs finding dead eggs, you know, or in aliens where they open up and that face hugger comes out, you're finding dead face huggers in, in this ship as well. Um, but in Destroyer of Worlds, like, I've started running it for two groups now. Both groups mm-hmm. have encountered a Xenomorph Session 1. Okay. Where, yeah. where Trinity God, you didn't see it till the end. You saw it like at the mm-hmm. end right. of Act 3 it made an appearance. Yeah. You're fighting one in Session 1 here out of the gates. Jeez. Wow. Yeah, that's that's gotta be rough. That's that's good stuff though. Like I do like that concept though because it, it creates a like a meta experience. Because I think if you're seeing the dice ticking up, like you know, okay, my number is increasing. Yeah, that first one, there's a chance something bad can happen. But like as it's going, you can feel it ratcheting up. So even when nothing is occurring due to the stress mechanic, you know that it's looming out there. So that's like really nice. It's it's just like a subtle effect like throughout your over the table play. Yeah. Oh, and the other thing it does well. Uh, you- saying that is reminding me so you have you have buddies and rivals also within okay. your own crew and you pull on that but also there's you do we do cinematic play so there's three acts in cinematic play in act one act two act three you get a different agenda it's a secret agenda that's only available to you only you see it and that kind of affects and dictates how you play as the adventure unfolds okay so that also has other people kind of guessing like what what's going on like what is their what's their allegiance here are they working mm-hmm. with me are they working against me why did they say that why are they doing this so they, it has that going on so you have like that doubt like i said it, paranoia pvp is is inevitable in this game it's going to happen mm-hmm. uh and in this latest adventure they introduce story cards so like mm-hmm. i'll be playing and then all of a sudden i'll say like uh you know dustin uh take a look in in the in the story cards um folder i just shared a card with you and everyone's like what and he'll read it and you just and you just keep you just keep jamming like you've given them something it's going to happen at some point that they now need to like incorporate it. And the rest of the group's going like, what do they get? Oh, what's going on? What's, when's this going to happen? So it, it just, it, it ramps up and ratchets that. And also like I watched players get stressed out playing it, not just the, the P uh, the PCs themselves. Oh, that's because great. Of it. Yeah. See that, that I think would be a really cool mechanic. Cause like the only other time I played a game where I felt that it pulled off something like that was a board game and it was the Battlestar Galactica board game. Oh god, that, that mm. board game is so good. Like, oh man, this the is like, traders, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like so good at compelling like paranoia and just like backstabbing and just it, uncertain. It captured the feel of the show. It mm-hmm. really captured the feel of the show. Better than a lot of board games I've seen. That have- For sure. And so like if you could do that with a game, I think that's like one of the best things you could really pull off. Like you know, like every game kind of has its goal, I think. But like horror games, you know, which Alien obviously fits in in a horror genre, like that has to be right, or it just doesn't work. Like, so I, I played games where they've tried to do a horror thing, and you know, you don't have these sorts of mechanics, and it just feels like a hack and slash, you know. And yeah, it, it's hard to really kind of buy in. But like, okay, that's you got me sold already on just like <laughs> Wait, a couple lines here. I, I, I've I watched I've right watched Terry to the Gods. I mean, it's a fun game to watch how it, how it plays. Like, I really do like the mechanics. I haven't played it myself yet, but I, I've watched um, I watched Lindy do Cherry to the Gods. I watched you do Cherry to the Gods on your channel. Like, I like the way Aliens play so far. I'm, I'm start. You know, I'm running Destroyer of Worlds now for two groups. If I need to do a third group, you guys just tell me because I love yeah. I love this Wait. game and I would love to run it for more people. How, how many sessions is it? Probably. It depends. So, like, Act One for the first group has taken, I want to say three sessions. There's certain beats that have to be hit in act one. Act one sets up the whole scene. Whereas mm-hmm. we've now slid into act two and act two could, could be completed in one, two to three hour session. And act three is going to be, I think on the shorter side as well. So it has been different than Cherry Gods. Cause Cherry Gods we've done, we did an act per episode, two hour episode, but because there are certain beats that need to be hit with the, the first act in this one, it's it's taking a little bit longer and you can't skip it. You know, as GMs, we can, you know, 
move over things yeah. and yeah, you, know, you can these, slide things around. These things are critical to the story. You have to you have to have them. Okay, hit. but it's a it's a it's a solid three to four sessions probably. To yeah. get to get yeah. through it. Okay. Yeah, that, that's not we, too much of a we, commitment. That's we have good. a show we do here on T2KB called Spotlight, where we mm-hmm. bring in guest GMs to run a one shot for us for a game system. So if it was oh. something we could we could do a, a system like a game of, I don't know if I could pin us down for for four games, but right. we'll, we'll see what we can yeah, do. Maybe we can I make it happen. Alien one shot. Okay, I'll, I'll <laughs> gladly do it. If you guys want me to? I'd love to. <laughs> Wait, we'll, we'll work on it sometime. Then we'll we'll get it put together. So. <laughs> I forgot about Levi's uh, four Mormon mercenaries. Yeah, yeah, that's that's one of the things that seems to have occurred on our, our one of our spotlight games. Is uh, that's true? The, it, that was with uh, Van Dam Van Dammy's uh, yeah. game, uh, yeah. Ballad of Pistolero. We had oh, Sean. Yeah, he came around spotlight for us. We ran a game session with him. And was, oh, nice! I'm running so. two of his adventures right now over on the channel. I'm starting one on Wednesday nights, and we just started one this past Sunday on Sunday nights. Nice. I know he puts a lot of content out there. He, he does good work. So yeah. Yeah, he was a fun guy to talk to as well. Um, yeah, so like, uh, can you think of any other games or in that kind of like style that they pull off a like a setting really well with a mechanic? It's a great question. It's funny. I was talking about this with someone else about Alien. I'm like, nothing in this game's new. None of these mechanics are new. They just nailed no. it. Like, they're yeah. not reinventing the wheel with this. Other games have done this, but they've just mm-hmm. done it so well. Um, that's a great question. Call of Cthulhu does mm-hmm. horror well, but it's a different horror. Right. Whereas, like, this is body horror and stress. Like, you really feel the stress. Call of mm-hmm. Cthulhu. Um, I don't even know how to classify it. You watched a bunch of it, Dustin. How would you? Yeah. Like, it's it's a, it I, is a descent into menace and characters. Well, I watched your Pulp life. Cthulhu game, yeah. and it had a little different feel than Call of Cthulhu that I've watched. Um, like Jay Bruce and you guys run, or Lindy run as well. Like I don't, the Pulp Cthulhu game had a different feel to it, but I think it was a little more role play like your group was just a little more into the character like the 20s sort of vibe and mm-hmm. and so it was i don't know that one that one felt different to me but it well it's definitely amped up action but like that mm-hmm. game i really found the characters changed over time like they all started off and they were like good people like they were truly good people <laughs> stoic they wanted to make a difference and over mm-hmm. time as they got exposed to these things they were doing ridiculous things that made sense in character because they mm-hmm. had just like right. fallen and descended to madness. They're taking, I don't know, like city of New York police officers out into the woods and shooting them, burying them in shallow graves. I'm like, what's right. going on? And then they justified it like in character terms. I'm like, oh, you're not I, wrong. You've been exposed to a lot of weird shit. I guess this makes sense when you put it like that. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to just throw this out there, Matt. Like, I'm not saying anything against Call of Cthulhu or Pulp Cthulhu. But I've gotten to know your players who are in that game. <laughs> there is something to be said about having the right group of players that decide to take on a system like that because they're very much the let's kill the guy and bury him in the alley somewhere kind of players. Like they don't they don't they don't mind doing that. So You're not wrong. All right. Yeah. You're not wrong. But, yeah, but there are certain games though that like if you hit it correctly, that there are things that players should do that like their character would do that they wouldn't necessarily choose as an action for them their own, right? Like like the, 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 the story dictates a little bit of how it kind of proceeds, you know, and like the, I think that's always really interesting when you could play a game where somebody, you know, like really well as a player, you know how they generally go about, you know, and then you sit down at a game and suddenly just the change of game changes the well, way they're interacting. I, like that's I know really for cool. me, the old D6 Star Wars really felt deadly. Like it felt like a Star Wars world yeah. compared to like when I saw Star Wars redone for like the fantasy flight games and stuff. I didn't feel like it was as deadly mm-hmm. as this uh, one? that. Yes, that's <laughs> yeah. the one. And that game was the only star Wars game where I felt like the, the lightsabers and the blaster rifles were like, you didn't want a combat to happen because something yes. was going to die. So, yeah. And we've been talking a lot about that recently, just that like the deadliness of games is something that Dustin and I are, like prefer, I think, you know, in general, you know, any system that doesn't use hit points, really, I think I prefer. You know, like the health yeah, levels, you know, like any time where I could look at a scene and go, I don't know how this is going to go, right? Like, it's I'm that World sure. of Darkness background. It's that it World is, of yeah. Darkness background we have. And, and LARP <laughs> people died all the time, and that was just, um, it was just a matter of life. And I think we grew accustomed to that. So. Yeah, I like the notion of if I go into a scene, I have an idea of what I want to happen. And I have an idea where I think things may go. But I don't have a certainty of I am going to walk out of this room. You know what I'm saying? Like, no matter who I'm dealing with, like, even if I think I have the advantage, there's always that, like, something out there that could probably 
nail you. I'm laughing uh, at chat. Is this for your yeah, it's Levi. On, on it's Levi. Is this the part where Jeff starts pooping on Fifth Ed? No. <laughs> we, here's the thing, though. Like, Fifth Ed, it, it, it's the, no the stories the you edition. tell with D&D are a different kind of story. Mm-hmm. Like, like, we joke because Jeff just lost a character in two Everstorm games ago in Fifth Ed. But mm-hmm. Levi never hit him with an attack roll. He nope. died from story plot. <laughs> he just, he just oh, really? plot killed him. Yeah, yeah, just out plot killed him. Like he, there it was, was never an it attack roll. Death. He never lost a hit point. He just failed his death checks, and that was it. He was mm-hmm. done. So it was like it was a, it was a death, and it was perfect for the way it went down. But like five E, it, it's not a game that you you tell that kind of a story, and it tells a different kind of story. I don't think I've ever lost a game or a character in D anD D due to hit point loss. Other than yeah. my own accidental murdered my own character with a, a crit fail. I had a first about a month or two ago for a character death that I've never experienced before in playing role playing. One okay. of my character or one of my players, one of their stats dropped to zero and they instantly dropped dead. I've Ooh. never had that happen before, ever. In which yeah. system? This was in Astonishing Swordsman and Sorcerers. So it's like, okay, it's mm-hmm. AD&D. Mm-hmm. It, it is. That's, that's yes. what the system is. It's Advanced Dungeons and Dragons with a few house rules on it. Uh, and one of the characters he used, I think it was Charisma, as his dump stat. Oh. Yep. Um, We're on the wrong monster. And, <laughs> and he picked up a magical item. He picked up a magical item, put it on, and it was predetermined that um, you, would, you would lose, I think it was three or four Charisma when he put this thing on. He only had three Charisma. He dropped dead on the spot from magic. That's item. amazing. Three Charisma. I've never wow. seen that. That's, oh, that's amazing. amazing. Yeah, I don't think I've seen it. Like, I know it's a possibility because you get stuff like Wraiths or something, you know, like Innervation Spell or something that's super deadly if used correctly. But yeah, we don't, I don't think we've really had that come up to us either. Like, I've, I've seen us no. dip pretty low, but I don't think we've ever died from it. We've, we've never, I mean, in most modern D&D games, mm-hmm. you, uh, you do stat all- alicots like you you start at 10 then you could like take a minus here like Mm -hmm. it's not dump stats the way it used to be when you rolled 3d6 and you had that three hanging out there like but we we did did a down the line we went old school we did a dcc dungeon crawl classics tournament and there was a couple of uh traps in that black heart of thaculon dungeon that um a certain room could dump could break your stats down to the point that you would technically die from it if you hit zero Mm -hmm. that that game features that as a real possible threat at all times where and again that's just another system thing where that system really wants you to feel that that burn of your stats as you're going through so they give you the right. option of burning to as an advantage in some cases and so that was the only other game i can think of where we almost had it happen and that was a tournament setting with the sheets that we you know were handed oh, God, to those character sheets right. were so, so bad they were, <laughs> that's, so that's the only other one i could think of that we played where we've almost had it happen <laughs> But yeah, I do think games feel really different just on that one mechanic alone. Just hit points versus health levels. Yeah, it makes a huge difference in my opinion. So I feel like health yeah. health levels, like the, the the everyone's basically the same level squishy, but like it's what you do actively keeps you alive. Whereas mm-hmm. with you know, health levels or a hit point system, it just feels like I'm a sponge. You're like, oh I know, no matter what happens within reason, in the next three rounds I'll be fine, you know. It's not until the fourth round I really got to worry, you know, like, and then, then (laughs) there's still like 60 ways I can survive, you know, like, whereas, you know, with the World of Darkness game or like uh, any of these other systems we're talking about right now that use the health levels, it feels just like, or like Zweihander in particular, you know, you walk around a corner, you're like, there's a dude with the sword. You're like, "Mm -mm, no, (laughs) no. They learn pretty quickly. (laughs) You don't mess with it. No, it's like a fearless sense. Knock them yep. down and then yeah. run away. Yeah. I've, I've been teaching them slowly by using it on them. Then okay. you have to lead with the stunt and then the attack. I, then I, attack. I teach them the proper order of order of operations in Spyhander by doing it to them till they figure it out. <laughs> Initiate perilous stunt attack. That's what you use three AP for. Every yeah, round. that's right. Every <laughs> round without fail. But yeah, I, I like that kind of feel though because then it opens up a lot of tools for the DM. I think that you don't get with hit points like. You get scenes that feel edgy just because it's an edgy scene. It doesn't need to be deadly in the sense of like there's 60 dudes there. They're going to shoot you with a crossbow at one time. Well, it could be like there's have two to, guys. You don't have to have a status effect that tells you to be afraid. Yes. Like you don't have to have an afraid <laughs> status effect so right. that you can role play afraid for a round because you're already like, oh, crap, I'm going to die. Like, you know, mm-hmm. you don't need a mechanic for that. Like it's it's built in because you look at your health levels. And you're like, if that happens again. I'm done. 
<laughs> so it's it's already there. But yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think about any other like major mechanics like that that really kind of change the tone of a game. I I think the other one that really changes the tone for me, and Werewolf does this in the World of Darkness probably better than Vampire anywhere else, is multiple attacks. Mm. When because to me, what really stretches out a combat and what takes a narrative feel away from a combat for me is multiple attacks in the same turn, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things is why Hitter doesn't allow. Uh, yeah. For the most part, is it keeps it streamlined to a stunt, an attack, a move, or a defense. And when you got people who stand there and they get to take like seven swings around, and everyone else is like, he's on swing three, calculating up his hits and damage again. Like and by that point, it, it it breaks what seems like six seconds worth of uh, of action. Well, like I get, I guess it depends on the game though. It really does. Mm -hmm. Because, like, that astonishing swordsman and sorcerer is you gain more attacks as you level up as well. Like, if you're a fighter, you just keep sure. gaining attacks. And it, it, it makes sense. That and it's an old school hack and slash. So you almost it, want to. Like, it, right. it feels at home there. But I agree on some systems where it's like, I'll say, okay, let's say 5e. It, it's like you just sit there. All right, when's my turn? Have you done your four attacks, your five attacks, or whatever? And barely scratch whatever we're fighting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, that, that, I always felt that way about the D10 systems, like Werewolf, where you could just spin Rage and just keep going. Um, uh, Exalted, mm -hmm. where, God, Exalted. You could split dice pools, 700. Yeah, dice pools were so big, you could split, like, seven attacks out of them and, like, just go full anime, basically. Like, it was, yep. you know, and that was, if you were wanting anime, like, that was the system to use. If you yep. wanted to tell an anime story, you reach for, you just reach for Exalted. It was perfect for what you want to do. 100%, like, yeah. You know, right. so it's it's what it's what feel you want for your story that matters. Like, and then you grab the right system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I sure. agree. Yeah, I'm trying to think of it as the the multi tech thing. Like, I, I think it does change the flow. I don't know if it changes the the feel of the game itself to me. You know, in terms of like what a like a, what a scene feels like. I don't know if that changes to me. Um, though I guess it kind of does because like you get something like a vampire with celerity with super speed or like a werewolf mm -hmm. dumping rage or. Uh, you know, or fighter dropping five attacks, six attacks, or whatever in a round. Um, yeah, I guess it does seem pretty obviously supernatural at that point. You have to look at a scene and go, like, is there anything I could be doing in this scene? Not really. That, that guy's just got me. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to me, to me, that's one of the biggest action economy like that mm -hmm. is one of the biggest things that changes for me. Yeah. Well, I mean, flow around the table is an important aspect. Like, and we were talking about this in our Discord, um, what, yesterday? We were kind of joking around about, oh, you should make a new edition, <laughs> you know, because like, yeah, I have my complaints about certain systems, and uh, I'm like, sure, okay, I'll start looking <laughs> Go at on. it. Go on, tell me more. <laughs> tell us more, right? <laughs> I'll uh, I'll just leave that in the Discord for people who want to chat about that. But um, <laughs> yeah, we were talking about you know like things that we would like to see, some like systems and whatnot, and you know what it ke keeps coming around to is a lot of complexity you can put into a system. Um, and that's okay up until the point where it starts detracting from the time at the table. You know, so like, right, right. And that's the tricky like, balancing point. Is it complexity for the sake of a complexity or right. does it make sense within the narrative of the game? I agree 100%. Yes. Yeah. It's way too often with all these games that I'm buying and reading and running, it's just like, oh, this. To they, be... they were going for more than, than what they needed to here. This... Right. And to me, the point is for any system, and most of the time when we're talking about these systems, we're talking about mostly about combat systems. Yes. I mean, oh, yeah. 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 like, you know, I, I, I preach this about Zweihander. It's one of the few games I've played that has an actual social system. Mm -hmm. Like, most games just make a skill roll, call it, do a little role play, and your, your social system's done. Like, Zweihander's right. kind of rare in that aspect for me, anyway. But, like, um, I put out there, like, Witcher. Mm -hmm. Witcher was the example I put out there. I'm like, fantastic combat simulation system. It's it's a little much for me to want to track like all the mm. partial armors that you have to detract how much armor you lost off of your arm versus your left arm like you know how much weapon you're just degraded from yeah. that attack and parry like it hits a certain level of minutia there I don't want to deal with it's a lot of tracking like, for me as well it's I like a lot of tracking but so. only so much crunch in my games yeah well, and, I, and, and and it's for a low fantasy game which like why hinder is also but like in low fantasy when not everyone's got a lot of magic like maybe those things to track become a little more viable in those situations because you're not yeah. tracking a lot of status effects. You're not tracking a lot of everything else. So maybe you need that a little more for the complexity of combat to make it a little more engaging. For well, me, I, I just like my combats to get over quickly. 
Yeah, I think there are other types of players too, though. Like, if you think about the people who used to play Mech Warrior, right? Like, that's going to oh, be yeah. right up their oh. alley, right? <laughs> I've got the latest edition. I'm getting ready to. I want to run it here in the next nice. couple of weeks. I mean, that game was all about, you know, kidding out your mech, figuring out where things were, the tactics in the game, you know, figuring out where the hit locations were, you know, how you did this, how much heat you built up, blah, 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 blah. So, like, in that sort of thing, I think, like, if you buy into it knowing that's what you're getting, I think it's fine. You know, like, yeah, that's that's actually pretty cool. Right. right too. It's they've they've scaled it down. It's how way big? more user friendly now. Outside of mechs, it's like fate and you've got like cues and uh, mm-hmm. tags and things like that. In mech, it's crunchy. But it's mm-hmm. not as crunchy as it used to be. It's very they've designed this one to be very welcoming to new players. But you still got your different points you hit mechs, you've got your overheating. It's just a really scaled down version. Huh. But yes, I, I, I agree that yeah, it can get a bit much. If you want that in a game, there's games out there that do it for you, mm-hmm. but it can go overboard sometimes. Oh yeah. For me, what's what's interesting with that with like a mech warrior is is that if you're the pilot of the mech, that is what your character is actually doing in the game though. It's 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 calculating how much heat it's got and what it's just, and it's looking at monitors that tell you what its systems have and what's mm-hmm. damaged. Like that's a part of the experience for something when you're driving like a mech. Mm-hmm. Yes. To me, when I'm wearing armor and I'm just fighting a guy, I'm not just, I'm not looking at how many chinks of mail just fell off of my no. arm armor. Like to me, that's that's where that breaks away from it, right? Like yeah. sometimes those kind of mechanics fit and they give you that sensation that you're in that mech and you're doing this thing. And then mm-hmm. maybe in other situations, that level of minutia doesn't doesn't hold for me as well. So. Well, I think that's something that these uh, virtual systems can handle for us better. Like we were talking about, you know, virtual tabletop in the chat or you know, Roll20 or Fantasy Grounds or what were you saying the last one was that we were just talking about? beforehand Found- foundry foundry, I, foundry. I, I was like to jump to foundry i picked it up over the weekend this weekend last week i don't know mm-hmm. but i'm like i'm moving every game i can over foundry this thing is unreal unbelievable it takes all the best pieces of roll 20 all the best pieces of fantasy rounds and rolls into one beautiful package and the community is insane it's huge they're putting out mods systems for the most mm-hmm. part, it's free. There are people who put who put stuff up on Patreon, and I've heard that there will be a marketplace as well. But majority of the stuff's free. It's and the, it's all like the community makes it out of love for everybody else. It's it's unreal what's going on over there right now. Very well, that's cool. Think, Definitely something to check out then. Yeah, I, I highly recommend. And there's no subscription fees, one time only. Similar to some of the other virtual tape tops, but um, it it was almost born out of necessity. I think I know there's a lot mm-hmm. of frustration with some of the other virtual tabletops out there, and people are taking those frustrations and they're funneling it into creating something really, really good for for all of us who play these games online, which we have to now due to you know the state of the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, and and I think that's like these sorts of tools. I think are useful, uh, Leviathan. I, I just heard it. I just forgot it. Foundry, I think, is what it is. Foundry but is my brain is like Foundry. every time I say it, I'm like, Crucible. I've, I've Crucible? heard a lot of people it's talking like, about no. it. Like I said, it's it's picking up a lot of steam out there and a lot of a lot of publicity right now. So, yeah. It's an up and comer. It's a new kid on the block. Look out! <laughs> but what, what I keep thinking early. about these though is that the the crunch can be done by a computer, right? And it, yes. And these sorts of systems where, like for our group, we're always online. We're never going to be really playing in person with the exception of once a year, maybe. Um, And with the coronavirus doing its thing, we're probably not going to do that anytime soon. So like these, this seems like a time where you can get into these crunchier number systems if you have the right tools to handle it. Because like you could program in, I do three attacks in a round. Here's all my penalties. Yeah. You know, here's what my opponent has. You just go click, 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 done, and it just rolls it all out. And here's your results. Yeah. And it took you three seconds. You know, like, and at that point, I don't see any problem with it because you front load all of your your work, and then at the table, it's fast. It's seamless. You click a yeah. single yeah. button, and it yeah. does all of it in one roll for you. Yeah. yeah once yeah. you know how to program and do the macroing and stuff, you can make some of those things a little quicker. Um. Mm-hmm. And to me, it's still a matter of what you have to what you have to track outside of of that stuff. It's the status effects and everything else that all pile on that you have to track that that slow the system down for me. A lot. I will say, Fantasy Grounds does that well. Like especially yeah. if you're doing 5e, like it mm-hmm. tracks all of it. It'll track it for the amount of rounds it's even supposed to. It'll fall off on its own if you're a combat. Like the the tracking of status effects and everything else in, on that virtual tabletop is unreal. Uh, I know there are people programming free mods to do it as well over on Foundry, but most of it is for, for 5e. It's the biggest, most popular That's game. It's the biggest market right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's huge. Um, but it's those quality of life. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know what you want to call them. Uh, yeah, features, whatever. Mods, yeah. features, whatever they are, that, that really... 
especially for the GM, makes it worthwhile. And that's one of the reasons I've, I've jumped over also just the little quality of life things that I'm adding to my games. It's like, this is amazing. It means like almost nothing to anybody else. But as a GM, it like saves time. Like oh, over man. there, like when I load up a map, I can pinpoint on the map where I want the players to be when I load it. And I was like, this is amazing. Like to me, that means the world <laughs> to a player. They don't care. I could set up, I could make little doors that people can see and they can actually click them and open them. And it makes a little noise when it opens. And I was like, I'm sold. I'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Like that. <laughs> well, I mean, I'll these things aren't out. too hard to write. I don't think depending on like what it's written in, but like, the, the tracking stuff should be something that all of them are doing, right? Because, like, all you have to do from, like, a back-end sort of thing would be, like, make a list of all the effects that are in play. Whenever the initiative tracker hits a certain point, you degrade a number on all of them by one. Done. Falls off when it's on zero, you know? Lies your status effects on the sheet. Like, that doesn't mm -hmm. seem that hard to write. I'm surprised it's not used in, in more places. Well, you'd be surprised how much of this is done by fan base. Yeah, it is. Like that's the thing. Yeah. Like when you look at like the sheets and stuff that you're using on Roll Twenty, a lot of them are put together by fans. They're not mm -hmm. put together by coders. They're put together by people who have maybe a bit of coding knowledge and the mm -hmm. ability to create a a functioning sheet. Like, hmm. okay, I think so you guys have a lot to do with it. Yeah, I'm tracking saying, a little hey, bit here in the chat. Virtual tabletop guy. There you go. You got to get some people. Get some Roll Twenty. <laughs> we will. We hey, we're always <laughs> looking for people to bring on here to, to yeah, talk about this stuff. So we're always we're always on the hunt. We'll we'll find the people. Don't worry. <laughs> make it happen. But yeah, I mean, no, if you have a system, them, we talk to the game designers, the streamers, and all that. People forget about the the platforms that we're playing the games on. Yeah, yeah I mean, well, we, that's a good we place to one, go. Uh, I think. We we met one at the Gen Con a year ago, mm -hmm. and we we got to hang out for the day. I met one okay. then who he gave us some information. I looked through his stuff, and we just didn't make the jump. And I don't mm -hmm. know if it ever took off beyond that. But uh, no, but no, no I, we can always uh, re we, retouch on that because I think that's a thing that. As consumers, we need to be interfacing more with people making the tools, right? Because like mm -hmm. the stuff we're running into in the day to day is, uh, we clearly see where things need to be ironed out, right? Like this is a, in a facet that is really slowing me down. Is there something to be done here? Yes. Okay. How is it implemented? Go. It's like when you're sitting in front of a code, you know, just sitting there trying to type out, like oh, I think people probably need this you know and then yeah you run out of your yeah. ideas and then you're like okay that's good enough <laughs> <You know? laughs> and maybe it just goes out and never gets Whatever. fixed you know? <laughs> yeah but i mean there's stuff like this i don't see it being too hard if you have enough of the infrastructure already laid out and i, I with roll 20 i'm not sure what all is in there exactly that you can hook into uh, actually i don't really know how much is really in there to hook into with all these systems because i haven't really dug into it but maybe i need to start looking at that a little heavier there's somebody who can do coding. A rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of opportunity there for someone who can do coding, Jeff. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh yes. Yeah, so we'll like I said, this. people people are putting stuff up on Patreons. You can create systems. You can create yeah. codes. You can create all kinds of little features and mods. Mm -hmm. Throw on your Patreon. People pay you money for it. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Because uh, you know, like I, I think for me, like the more of that stuff that could be implemented, the better. Like I'm not really that good at like making maps or you know, making visually interesting things, but that stuff I could probably rock. So we won't need to there touch on that. But yeah, like, by, like they're saying in the chat here, a lot of what people are wanting are codifying and mapping the rules into the system. Yeah. And there's just a lot of game systems. So I guess there is a lot of work on there that. There is. There's, there's new ones coming out every week. <laughs> Never it end. seems like it. Yeah, there's a ton of them out there. Um, I mean, you go into the list, if you're going to make a game on roll 20 and you look at all your options, like mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a ton of them out there. And more on the way all the time. How many Kickstarters are you in right now, Matt? I mean, Ooh, how many? <laughs> yeah. I did Twilight Two Thousand last week. It's it's free league. I have to. Uh, <laughs> uh, Hellboy launches on Wednesday. I'll be back in that. Mm -hmm. Which I got announced about that coming up. Um, what else do I have going on right now? I don't know if I've back too too much. I've had to. You know, we're not working. I can't really justify to my wife, you know, uh -oh. Kickstarters yeah. right now. So I've had to be really picky about what I do back. <laughs> uh, but probably 2000 last week. I've been waiting for that. It was announced, I think, back in spring. New freely game. I don't care what it is. I'm in. They're the ones who make Alien and Forbidden Lands and all these other ones. Um, and Hellboy. I'm a giant Hellboy fan. It's like my favorite comic book character property. That launches next week. I'm sorry, Jeff. It's using 5e as its rules, yeah. but uh, it launches. It launches on Wednesday. I'm sorry, not next week. It launches this Wednesday. Um, so I'll be backing that. How about you guys? What have you backed? Uh, I I don't hardly back any. I buy them once they become actual products. Then I then I pick them up. So. <laughs> and you buy them? All right. Then I buy them. I, I buy them the once last... they're products. 
So I think the last thing I backed was whatever's leading up to the Exalted Third Edition. It was the last time I did it, I think. Okay. Yeah, that, it's been a while. Yeah, but uh, God, yeah, that's interesting. There's a lot more games out there than I was really thinking of. Like, <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> I, I don't apparently because. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. So Airlaser's saying she backed the uh, Cena Uno. We talked to them yes on the show, and oh, that yeah. was a really good product. Yeah, um, yeah. And Hellboy is a system that if you were like, hey Dustin, what system needs to be for Hellboy? Five E is the answer. Like it, yeah. it really works well for like Hellboy. That it's makes a, sense, you know. Oh, okay. Let's okay. I'll answer a question in the chat there. Favorite Hellboy character or top five? Let's do, ooh top five. Oh, uh, we'll do favorite's got to be Hellboy. You have to choose Hellboy. Second is Lobster Johnson, because I love my pulps. And then I'll go with Abe. He seems like the obvious choice, but I'll go with Abe from there. Those would be the like, top three characters um, if you're looking at heroes. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, Lobster Johnson's up there, though, with, with, with Hellboy, because I love me my pulps, and that's such a good character. In order. All right, Hellboy number one, Lobster Johnson, Abe Sapien. Abe Sapien. We'll go with that. <laughs> but, so speaking of Hellboy, I, I brought it up. So Hellboy launches... On Kickstarter on Wednesday, mm-hmm. okay. and we've got the Quick Start that hasn't been released yet. Oh, nice. We're going to have an adventure in it, and we're going to be running it on Thursday at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time on Grim Perilous Plays. So you, Kickstarter launched on Wednesday, and we're going to run Hellboy, the role-playing game. You can see it. You can oh, see it action after the Kickstarter goes live. Have any questions? We'll do our best to answer them. I'm not a developer. I, I didn't work for them. But I reached out to the guys as a big Hellboy fan said, can mm-hmm. I please run your game while the campaign's going on? So I'm going to run over to Foundry as well. And uh, we're going to go through the, the Kickstarter adventure. And that's uh, nice. Thursday night, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time on Grim and Perilous Plays. And I, I am excited. And I've been working like a madman in Foundry because I got that quick start, I think, on Friday. <laughs> and I've been working all weekend to program it into, into Foundry. Uh, that's, that's cool. Amazing. That's really cool. Well, that'd be cool. I'll definitely have to try to tune in. Uh, we usually do video games on Thursdays, but I mm-hmm. don't know if it's happening this week. But I'm not in grounded. If it is happening, so I'll probably be hopping back and forth to check some of it out then for sure. So yeah, well, we're playing it by ear. I'm not sure because uh, some of us are jostling times around a little bit. So we may have a little bit of time there. We'll see. Yeah, drop by if you definitely want. Stop by and watch some action. Of it. And I, I don't know. What, I don't know if I can talk about because I talk about like how it works in Five E, Dustin. But I don't think I can talk about it yet. Yeah, um, those are rough situations. <laughs> I, have, you I, have, can't. I, I could tell you like how it runs in five E, but tune tune in on th- Thursday after the uh, kicker lunch on Wednesday. I guess what I was I guess what I was getting at is is like when you look at when you when we this is what you kind of wanted to talk a bit about tonight too uh, mm-hmm. as a question yes, that we posed. This, this is leading right into our right yes, into our topic of the night is, is when you're talking about particular IPs and you're mm-hmm. like, well, what kind of you know what what IPs out there need a tabletop RPG that maybe don't have one or haven't had a new edition in a hundred years. And you're like, well, what kind of system would you want to apply to it? If you were like us, what sort of system would you want to run Hellboy in? If Hellboy TTRPG didn't exist, I'd be like 5e. See, <laughs> I guess that's, what I'd run it in. I've always said about 5e, you make superheroes in that game. You feel like yes. a superhero yeah. because yeah. of all the abilities and you're unstoppable and you can take on literally anything that the DM throws at you. And that's Hellboy. That is Hellboy to a T. Like that is the system that works the best for Hellboy. There's, it's easy. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's a no-brainer for me. Yep. yep. If you want that rock'em sock'em, you got it. Mm-hmm. You know? You do. Yeah. You that, do. And it's quick. Yeah, that's so. what I, I wanted to bring up tonight. So I got I got my top three. This was my number one game. This was my grail that I wanted. There was an old Hellboy RPG that was released as a GURPS. I have it here behind me. I'll never mm-hmm. run it. It's GURPS. Sorry. I've never played GURPS and I'm, I'm not interested <laughs> in starting. That thing is good. But um but so my number one want was always a Hellboy RPG. So now that it's off my list, I I threw it to the Twitter verse this past week. I said, okay, that's down. We got a new number one. I'm gonna say it because I'm gonna say I got a top three list here, and I want your guys' okay. top three lists as well. Okay. Of okay. IPs or properties you want to see turned into role playing games, even if they exist, say a new version. Because like I said, Hellboy was in GURPS, but it's GURPS. Um, right. Top three and the system that it would work best with. Oh, now, see, that's that's the tougher part for me. I don't have yeah. any of the system yeah. experience that you do. Hmm. But yeah, I know I mean, my first one because yeah, I'm currently look, working on it myself. Taking over, Dustin. You're, you're up. What's your yes, first one? My, this Mario, Mario Brothers. Mario Brothers. Mario Brothers. Mario Brothers. I'm running really it for my that. kids. I am taking Five E and I'm reskinning it for Mario Brothers. Oh. But I'm starting to think that it's not the right system for Mario Brothers. But really? I want Mario Brothers. Why yeah. is it not the right system? <laughs> because hit points doesn't work right for 
for the way Mario works. He's big, That's then he true. gets small, yeah. then he dies. So mm-hmm. I need a system that better does that than <laughs> that, you know, and I, all the all the power ups can be magic items and stuff. So, you know, like I'm working some of that in there for the kids so they can play because my kids all understand the Mario world. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's an easy system for me to get them into, um, you know, especially I got a five year old and a nine year old. So, yeah. you know, they understand it and that in just a basic, simple mechanics like version of like 5e like a 5e light is kind of what i need for interesting for that, so maybe like a tiny dungeon or something like that too where you only roll I, like I thought about that six. too that would work yeah, yeah i thought about tiny dungeons easier. too uh, that was the other one i was kind of maybe leaning towards so yeah, i mean that's, that's a natural good. like health level situation right so like if you're little mario you got one health you know if you're all like, right you two you know because my you know some like my five-year-old can't do math but he can understand like to three or four. Like yeah, he can get he can that. Count the pips on the on the on the dice. Yeah, and he understands the idea that Mario's big and that he gets hit and then he dies if he gets hit again. Like he understands mm-hmm. that. So that's a, that's an easy system. Yeah, so that's a good hard call. To yeah. Mario Brothers was the first Twitter, one that came to mind. Mario. You get a lot <laughs> of new nope. Ninja Turtles, but you don't get Mario. I, oh, I want yeah. a Mario TTRPG, and he's been around oh, for a thousand years. There's no reason there shouldn't be one, but I, I don't think there is. I've, I've never seen. No, it, so. I I think you're right. I don't think yeah. one exists. Yeah, I don't remember seeing one anyway. That's, I know that's my second one too. I got a second one too, but I'm waiting for Jeff. All Let's right, Jeff, you're up. Jeff's well, okay. So like, I, <laughs> I think a lot of people. Hurt. We've been talking a lot about low fantasy kind of stuff, and so like, I feel like Game of Thrones would be an ob- obvious nod. You know, like it's out there. I saw it, held it in my hand. Yeah, I don't know if it's any good. I didn't I haven't played it, but I saw it at the game shop. I picked any it up. Any idea it. what they did with it? No, I didn't. I, I didn't play it. I, I picked it up, flipped through. It was like I don't know about this, and set it back down. But it is there. I've seen it. It exists. <laughs> I'm not even. I'm not even familiar with it. Who makes it? I I, I didn't look at it that closely. Green honestly, honestly right. but it is oh, there. Green Ronin. That makes sense. So yeah. they're the folks yeah. that it's make Mutants and Masterminds, the mm-hmm. superhero role playing game. Yeah. Among other things. Okay. We're so friends I'm with uh, we're friends with Alex. Uh, he's from over there, so I can probably okay. get more information on for you, Jeff, from him. But yeah. he was just yeah. on the show a couple of weeks ago, and he, he's in my Zwei Hinder game, so I can we'll talk to him then about it if you want to. Do it. Interested. Yeah, I, mean, I think if you can manage to get a game set up with low fantasy, that kind of like politics kind of being important, you know, uh, you know, kingdoms management, that kind of stuff. I think those systems are always fascinating to me, and I you think that would social be social entry. Yeah. And yeah, kingdom management is what you need to marry together for that. Yeah. If you get that together and you get a good system, I think that would be really fun. You need a, you need a little more upper level than like what Zweihander could give you for that. Yeah. Like Zweihander is still a little on the streets. It's, a, it's a, Zweihander is still very much street level for Game of Thrones, but you couldn't get the aristocracy quite mm-hmm. the same, I think. You need a system that does like the, the kingdom management more. Zweihander is still very much the individual management. Like, yeah. It's got some of the titles like um military officer but like it's not you're not really military officering when you're playing one you're right. I, I <laughs> almost for like the intrigue piece and doing like your little subterfuge and trying to overthrow like right. playing the game of thrones itself um yeah. like blades in the dark that kind of game might work okay. well because that's a heist game and you got to plan it out and things go wrong and you can uh introduce other elements and it's more of a back and forth oh, with the gm cool. with yeah, a little yeah. bit of dice in it but I think that would work well, at least for the social intrigue piece. The, the kingdom management, I have no idea. I don't even know what <laughs> it's. It's almost a separate system. Like yeah. that's it when, be, a yeah. lot of the games that do kingdom management, it's like an additional book that comes out later on its own. Mm-hmm. So like it could probably be. You're probably house ruling and home brewing a lot of that because I don't oh, know very many games yeah. that do that. I don't know very many games that do that level of minutia, like kingdom building as a core mechanic of their game. Well, I mean, they did it in. Uh you know pathfinder first edition uh to some degree with uh kingmaker right so that module actually had a whole system of you know how right. to run a kingdom how to set it up who your advice that wasn't were, in the core that rules kind of that wasn't yeah. in the core rules though that yeah. came out like 10 years later like <laughs> that's what i'm saying like it's a book that came out 10 years later they were like oh yeah. everyone's been playing we need to figure out how to run kingdoms in this game now like it's, yep. it's rarely part of the core rules of the game but i think a lot of those things like you know watching like you know, the kind of the spy master kind of element in the background, that kind of stuff is really cool. Seeing like, mm-hmm. you know, like the Knights doing their thing, you know, the mass mass combat scenarios and army leadership and that kind of stuff is kind of fascinating. You know, it's stuff we tend not to do a lot of in a, you know, like a and d game, even though it's no. stuff that makes sense, but it doesn't make sense in D&D because of wizards <laughs> you know, and dragons. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Hey, let's field a big army. Cool. It's dead. <laughs> yeah. You, like you said, it'd have to be really, really low fantasy, which is not, which is not, 
Pathfinder, mm-hmm. Dungeons and Dragons. By default, you could you could take that stuff out. But again, I don't. It's not the right system for. You'd have to strip the system Game out so hard. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and even even like Witcher, like you said, like you wouldn't want to try to run Game of Thrones like with Witcher. Like it would. no, like you mm-hmm. said, it's all it's all boiled it's all, down to one role. All of yeah, this yeah. Virtual intrigue. Right. Yeah, you wouldn't oh, want to run it like that. Either. Oh, I failed. Okay. Well, let's move on <laughs> to the next scene. Right. Next plot. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. For, so do you have a third one? Do you want to go with your number three now, Matt? Oh, We've- my number three is The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai across the eighth dimension. Have you guys ever seen that movie? What? Jeff, I see you laughing. Have you seen that? No. Yeah, man. It is a classic. I think I've heard of it, but I don't think I've ever seen it. It's a movie starring yeah. Peter Weller yep. before Robocop. Uh, I'm getting a yes. All right. And I forgot All about right. this. Levi knows about it. So he's a, he's, a, he's a neurosurgeon. He's a scientist. He's a rock and roll <laughs> band leader. It's a cult film. It's like a sci-fi comedy adventure movie. It's got it's got no classification. You need to watch this afterwards, Dustin. <laughs> oh, um, I, apparently, I'm going to have to. I'll put it on my list. That's there we go. I love Buckaroo Banzai. In it, his band is the Hong Kong Cavaliers. You could you could make a Hong Kong Cavalier in the movie. He fights um, kind of like aliens from another dimension, who are disguised as humans, are trying to take over the Earth, and it's just wild, crazy, wacky technology and a world, and <laughs> anything can really happen. At the end of the movie, they tease. A sequel that never took place is Buckaroo Banzai versus the um, what was it the the the, the League of World Crooks or something like that? You'll, they'll they'll know in the uh, in the chat. I believe I'll the have one, that thing in there. More than he hears it, don't you worry. John Big <laughs> Booty, John Smallberries. This is all from the movie. So there we go. We've got some fans. This is a cult yeah, film. Levi anyway, has, all, Levi all, has all these pop references. To Mars. Mars. He says to references. Mars. Um. So. <laughs> I would that would be my number one. I want to see a Buckaroo Banzai. It would work because you could be a Hong wow. Kong Cavalier. You could be one of his one of his you could be in his band as a Hong Kong Cavalier. You could go on missions with Buckaroo. You could do these things. It would work because you don't have to play the main character to make it work. And you need to watch <laughs> this movie. I hated it the first time I watched it. And I've since <laughs> absolutely love this movie. It's got big actors. It's got Peter Weller who played Robocop. Mm-hmm. It's got Jeff Goldblum's got a little bit part in it. Mm-hmm. Um John Lithgow's the bad guy. Christopher Lloyd's in it, like pre oh, Back to the Future, people. like it's early '80s movies. It's got a bunch of actors that kind of went on to bigger things afterwards, uh, but it's hilarious and it, it's good. I mean, anytime you look at the name of that, yeah, I mean that's it's got it all right there in the title, <laughs> right? Right. The system I choose for that is Genesis, so that's the one that's on the Fantasy Flight Star Wars game, where you're rolling the mm-hmm. dice and you get success, but with a failure or a failure with a degree of success. I think it would be fun for a game mm-hmm. like that would fit it very well we are going around doing wild adventures and things could just kind of go wrong at any minute or go really well for you mm-hmm. so that's my number three pick is adventures of buckaroo bonsai we'll say across the eighth dimension that's a movie but would you say a buckaroo bonsai it's my number three oh, that's interesting. That's a deep cut. It, it is definitely a deep cut like because i always wonder about those ones because like uh you know like star wars one of the things we always complain about is that if you're not the main story or i guess game of thrones would probably fall in the same place here if you're not the main actors yeah what is there to tell is there a different story that can be told do you just end up being ancillary people or like you know like that's the tricky bit i think with some of these ip heavy ones we've talked about them in other episodes but uh, De- dealing with strong ips yes mm-hmm. yeah it would it would definitely be a tough thing to do and i've seen some people do it really well like indigo mm-hmm. chameleon does a fantastic job with alice in wonderland they oh, use yeah. they use 5e rules for it and, you know, I'm sure if they were here, they would say, give me an Alice in Wonderland TTRPG, right? It's not on my list, but I'm sure they would, because they're using it for that and for uh, Neverland. They do both. They do a game in both. And they use five point. rules. So. And that that's why Hellboy is going to work well, because you can be a, a BPRD agent. You can be an agent mm-hmm. within the agency. Yeah. Um, this is no secrets here. That, so Mantic, who's, who's publishing it, Red Scar has been working on it. Mantic's been putting out um, blogs on their website, and they've revealed that instead of, like, races... There's mm-hmm. that you could be like a, a remarkable human. You can be, you could basically you could make a demon or some other kind of creature like Abe Sapien if you want. You could play a mm-hmm. ghost. So like giving you those tools and then making you like you can be an agent within the agency. It works. Like mm-hmm. you don't have to play as Hellboy. You can make someone like Hellboy, but mm-hmm. you don't have to play as him. You're doing the same thing. Right. So, so I agree. It, it really depends on the IP because if you make a Batman game, everybody wants to be Batman. Right, exactly. like, you right. Have to be I don't want to be Robin. I don't want to be some nobody running around Gotham, <laughs> Gotham City. I want to be Batman in mm-hmm. a Batman right. role playing game. Which is why the best superhero games out there are ones that are not based off Marvel or DC. They're mm-hmm. mutants and masterminds where there's not a 
canon, like everyone wants to be that person superhero. You make a hero in this world and then you go play. Yeah, yeah. Well, and uh, so like kind of some of the other ideas I was having were less about like uh, you know, like TV shows necessarily, but like video games that I played that I looked at and went, there is an opportunity for role play here if you could ever find a group of people that would do it. And I never did. So it'd be cool to make them into a role playing game. Something like Ark or Grand mm. Theft Auto online kind of situation you know <laughs> yeah every role game game just turns into grand theft auto after a little while <laughs> eventually yeah. crazy. but if you had Someone one that was like designed well you know like it actually captured it i think those would be kind of fun things to do so i i know my second one all right number two dustin rock it out ghostbusters i want ghostbusters oh okay i it's not on my list but i've also been screaming for ghostbusters nonstop. Mm-hmm. i've never played the old west end games one it is considered one of the best role-playing games ever. It goes hmm. for astronomical prices online because it's long out of print, and it is considered such a good game, even by today's standards. It's huh. considered a good one. So I'm right there with you on Ghostbusters. I think Ghostbusters would be fun. It's squad-based. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you, you could you could probably redesign different proton packs to do different things, and the guy run of the trap, and you could have all these different kinds of ghosts, and, like, you could tell all kinds of cool stories of Ghostbusters, I think. Like, it could be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. A, a copy oh, came up here recently and they wanted $200 for it. And I was like, oh, I can't justify God. it right now. I'm not having a job. Because it's like a rail game for me. I want Ghostbusters that bad. Like I was I was contemplating. I was even reaching out to some friends. I'm like, is this worth it? Is this a good going rate? Are they asking too much, too little? Like I almost bought it. I didn't. But like it's one of those that I like I want it on my shelf one day, even if I never play it. Now, spoiler alert. Jeff, shut your ears. I have I have a Ghostbusters esque episode coming up in Horror and Huttenberg. Nice. Maybe maybe this coming Sunday. Oh. So if you watch my GM prep show on here last week, we made we made the warehouse fifty one where, oh, where they're nice. going. And, and I found a way to use some simple Zweihander rules to to basically do a Ghostbusters esque episode if the players decide to do it. So we'll I'll see if they go there. Out. They don't have to go there. They may not, but the witch fire, the witch fire flamethrowers, maybe uses proton packs. <laughs> they may have to go in to clear out some some uh, creatures from the abyss. So <laughs> we'll see. If, That's awesome. Because there's there's a fun mechanic where if you hit them and they can't hit you back, they go back to the abyss. So oh, yeah. they're basically going to shoot them with proton packs and make them disappear. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it's it's going to be fun to see if it works. So I hope so. You yeah. can put your headset back on, Jeff. Everyone. What what system for Ghostbusters? Sorry. So that's a tough one for me, um, because to me, like Ghostbusters feels like, and to a degree, you can kind of almost do it. Like almost the D10 World of Darkness system is the one that comes to mind. Maybe because Wraith is already there, and because yeah. you're already humans. And in my opinion, World of Darkness does the best humans, just out of the can human characters. You're, you're fragile with the health levels. You've got your skills, your knowledge, as your talents. Like all that stuff could be easily put into. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, things like drive and vehicles is already perfectly in there. Right. So to me, it, it seems like it, you could almost do it with that and it would be a natural fit. But just it, go- best you, games goes you just looked it up. Jeff wouldn't, like, wouldn't it. like it. <laughs> it's a comedy <laughs> game. That's the thing, too. It is a comedy RPG that works, uh, which is like even yeah. rarer. Yeah, yeah, I see what no. I see. Yeah, that so, rule right there, Leviathan, that's that's the killer for me. Uh, so, any, yeah, any Ghostbusters is like, another one on my yeah, just 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 make now, it happen. I'm out. When we get to my number one, <laughs> it's it's. I'm surprised it doesn't exist. Maybe it does exist. I've just never seen it. But when we get to my number one, what, what, what was your? Did you have a number two, Jeff, on your list? Jeff, what's number two? We got Game of Thrones, number three. Yeah. Um, well, that's what I was saying. I think those video game ideas would be kind of interesting. You know, to to wrap around. Um, you already talked about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because that's definitely the obvious you can one. Right? Have turtles. That's that, fine. That's clearly turtles. where I would want to go. Like that that is every childhood memory that it was ever amazing. We did so much playing of that like in the yard, you know, picking up sticks and stuff. Of course you want to be a ninja turtle. <laughs> did you ever play the old Palladium one? No. No, see, like oh, actually it's I, wacky, man. It's my wacky. experience with games is somewhat limited, I would say. Like I played Shadowrun, I played D D, I played Pathfinder, obviously, I played World of Darkness games. Uh, and then like a smattering of like one-offs for other we, things, you know, we, as a group, we, but we're very, we're very monogamous. We get ourselves right. a yeah. game that we like, and we play that thing into the ground for a long time and occasionally take. Yeah. Did uh, Dustin Angel. freeze up there? 
think Dustin froze. I think froze. he lost his audio. <laughs> he's totally froze on my screen. Um, yeah, he's frozen. But so, we'll, so we'll TMNT, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that would be pretty fun. Um, you know, obviously that one's got to be more comic-y in some fashion. Yeah. So, you know, like the rules have to be a little loose and kind of fun and uh, open-ended for... Is he still getting his subtitles? That's amazing if that's the case. <laughs> Is it really? No, it stopped on the on the. Well, no, that makes sense because that means it's his Discord that has gone down and not his Chrome. So So we're we're still listening to Dustin. Subtitles. (laughs) That's hilarious. All right, well, we'll see if Dustin gets back on it. If if it takes him closing and opening Discord, is going to shuffle everything like it just did. I'll become Matt. You'll become Dustin for a moment. That's all right. Hey, streaming problems. I get it. We'll see if it flips back around. Bam! Nailed it. (laughs) Got it. (laughs) That's it. We're back up. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think you need kind of a comic-y feel, obviously. Uh, now I think Jowsum froze on me. <laughs> God, this is Discord, you bastard. Is it, is it on uh, your end, Jeff? Or is it I, on my end? I have no idea. Uh, I'm staring at Discord and it's frozen on Discord. So, yep. Yeah. Got to do the same thing. I think our whole, I think the whole server just took a dump. <laughs> okay, let's, let's take a second here. I will clap so I know to edit this out in the future. And uh, we'll see if we can get Matt uh, in his infinite smiling here to uh, close and reopen the Discord uh, call and see if he'll pop back in there as animated. So we are still seeing you. You were talking about buckets of dice, which sounded fun. But um, we'll see if it kind of pops back up here. Oh, yeah. He completely, did. He completely DC'd. So that's going to pop him back in here. Here we go, maybe? Hello? Maybe. Hey, there he is. Hey, I'm back. we're back. Perfect. My infinite smile. I saw that. And I was like, "Oh shit, I'm frozen." <laughs> you got lucky though. Like the, the it froze you on a good scene. Yeah, I was like, "You're like, <laughs> you, had, you had a really Picking clean my smile." Nose. <laughs> yeah, I'll be next here in a second, Grouch Catch. That's right. It'll just take a couple yep. seconds, and I'll. Uh, so mine won't be so good though. I'll be like, yeah. I was saying, um, Savage Worlds. I don't know if I picked up Ooh. or not. Savage Worlds for TMNT, I think, would be a good fit. Okay. okay. And you were saying for that. for what reasons do you think? Well, its whole motto is fast, furious, fun. It's all about mm-hmm. rolling a bunch of dice. The success levels are really low in Savage Worlds, and that's what's nice about it. I think you typically need, like, mm-hmm. I think it's a four, and then that means a success. And you're always rolling okay. two dice, at least two dice for every test. So uh-huh. it'll give you that hero feeling, and it's kind of over the top. You get to, they have mm-hmm. things called edges, so you can make your characters, like, fine-tune them and build them what you want them to be. So you can specialize in different, I don't know, martial arts mm-hmm. and styles and maybe different creatures with different traits and abilities, depending on what you wanted to be a mutant of. <laughs> nice. Right? Yeah, that I don't know. To me, I, I go right back to Exalted for hmm. TMNT. I, I could see... I feel like that'd be too complicated. It almost could be, but I mean, I feel like that's like... I feel like it's right in that wheelhouse for... for it's TMNT definitely Ninja martial Ninja. arts. It's definitely, you know, swords and fighting, you know, ninja tricks and stuff. So like, I could see that. But there's a lot of supernatural in there. <laughs> oh, just talking about Power Rangers. Power, um, Rangers. Power Rangers would be a good one. Would Nobody's made a Power Rangers game. Yeah, <laughs> Chad, yeah. Throw your throw yours out there. Throw your favorites. We'll get Thundercats. We'll Thundercats. Yeah. Thundercats. Somebody's hey, called for Thundercats. Masters of the Universe just got announced last week. Did it? We're finally getting oh. that. Yeah, we're getting a Masters of the Universe <laughs> game. You know, I was. I, I know a lot, somebody out there might say it, and I actually got to play it. It was actually kind of fun, but I played the 5e version of Ravnica, which is Magic the Gathering. Mm-hmm. And that yeah, was yeah, actually yeah. a really cool setting for, for 5e as well. So huh. I had a lot of fun with it for the um, for the ga- for the one game session I got to play it. It was it was kind of cool. So nice. For someone who didn't play Magic. Well, that's interesting. You know, because like, you don't really think of Magic as a role-playing game, but you can easily pull a lot of the concepts out of it. <laughs> yeah looks like leviathan knows a lot about that one obviously because he's a magic player um <laughs> yeah there uh, are, are a lot two. of 80s in here go ahead go ahead my number two is mad max we need a mad max oh yes game. that would be so good mad, it's got to have vehicle combat it's got to have out of vehicle mm-hmm. combat i'm going with the year zero engine for this one I'm going yep. with the Alien, Mutant Year Zero, Forbidden Lands. I'm going with that one. D6s, so you, you feel like a damn hero. Throwing the sixes, you're uh, pushing your luck. You're on the wastelands. Better, Things can go wrong, so you're pushing better. your luck. And, you've, and then and they've got the Hex Crawl, which would mm-hmm. work really well. As you're driving your vehicles, yeah. your caravans across the wasteland. 
We won't. We won't tell Adam Rose you said that. I mean, All right, radiator, right? Okay. Is that radiator going to work for that? I mean, I think it could, right? I have the same love for that source material. All yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be. I haven't seen him in the chat yet tonight. The radiator. No, he's not RPG, here. If you're so out there. With, he didn't know I was going to say that. Ah, radiator. I mean, uh, it's why Henry radiator would be the perfect system. For that. <laughs> that would be a fun one, though. And it was, punk, that is punk, a cool one. That would be awesome. Pretty much post-apocalypse, like something like we were talking about in our Discord earlier. Something like uh, The Walking Dead would be a good one if you could pull it off well. Yeah. You know, any of the that zombie apocalypse well. kind of things where you again, I think what we we're talking about those is just those those mechanics like survival. And like horror, kind of you know, fear, that kind of stuff. Like the intensity of the anxiety and stuff you're talking about from the aliens would really work well for that. Mm-hmm. That kind that of, hopelessness, finding yeah. gas, and then you get a gas canister and you roll and it's empty, right? And you're just like, oh, <laughs> my interceptor can't go any further. I mean, my dog and I need to carry on by foot, <laughs> right? God, I hope I find a can of cat last, food, right? <laughs> last of the V8s. <laughs> oh, Mad Max needs to be turned into a role-playing game. How has that yes. franchise not been picked up for that IP? <laughs> oh, for real. I, yeah, that's a good one. I hadn't, I hadn't considered Mad Max. Well, and that's not my number one. Dustin, okay. what is your number one? Now, I'm not saying it may not have existed somewhere, but for nearly 20 years, this thing has been a Goliath in fantasy. Where the hell's the World of Warcraft TTRPG? Oh, I I have where one. is Warcraft? Where is it? Give me one. a fantasy game that's not D and D in a world I understand because I put too many tours into into a Nixia's Lair and mm-hmm. into Black Rock Spire, and let me have this whole world I've explored for twenty years and give me a TTRPG built around that. Where is it at? I don't think I've ever seen it. So there was a three E made for it. Uh, was there a three E one? Uh, I'm looking it up now. Apparently, there was yeah. a 2005 White Wolf Publishing World yep. of Warcraft, game. and that one too. Yeah, really? I actually, I actually picked oh, that I one up back in the day. We just never used it. Oh, that's the thing. I think everyone just assumes there's one, but I, I don't know if I ever saw a single book for it. Like, mm-hmm. it's huge. There's no way it could not like could not exist. Like, I've so never heard of anybody playing and, it. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's got to <laughs> yeah, be somewhere did. out there, right? Like, if not, yeah. they need a new edition of it. And it, I don't know if I would want it to be 5e. Like, I don't think I'd want it to be 5e. I think I'd want it to be a system that's a little more, got a little more to it than that for that. Right. That's a good pick. That is a really good pick for an IP that is as huge. How has Blizzard not done this? Long lasting, the longevity of that yeah. property is and so much lore. So right? much lore. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's a good, solid one. Like, the one I looked at, I think, was the World of Darkness one. And it was interesting. But it it didn't quite line up to what I was wanting to see out of it. But really, like, so much of World of Warcraft is just about the lore, right? Like, the, the characters and the setting and, like, you know, the the environment that you're kind of in and the relationships there. So, like, I don't know. I, I do... I don't know. I'm trying to think of, like, the way that the game played and how that would translate into a, a TTRPG. I don't know. Maybe the White Wolf system wouldn't be better than the, the D&D system for that. Even though there were hit points and there were, like you know, build progressions, like feats and stuff. Right. As, I don't know, the mechanics of it almost feel more naturally inclined towards a D&D kind of setup. I think so. It's but high fantasy. It does. Yeah. It I, is high yeah. fantasy. It, it lends itself I, well to it. Uh-huh. I'm, not, I'm not suggesting it was a game where I feel like health level should be a thing. Like, I do feel <laughs> like it's a hit point system. I just don't know if I want the 5e system. Right, right, yeah. Versus a... Like, not Pathfinder 1st Edition level. Like, maybe Pathfinder 2-ish seems mm-hmm. like the right level of, like, what I would want for, for Warcraft, but with just yeah. more, more, more options than what Pathfinder 2 currently gives us, because it's just a core book at this point. So. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, you would need specific ones tailored to the classes, right? So, like, you would need... Right. Yeah. Yes, Dune RPG. Hell yes. It's coming. It's yeah. coming. 2D20, <laughs> which yeah. is also the Fallout one. I did. I I had the chance to get in on the beta, but I did not bite on that one. I, I I'm interested to see it though. I'm interested to see that that IP and what they do with it. Oh, Fourth Ed tried to be WoW for for D and D, but they, they they didn't quite get it right for me. But well, you know, we know Fallout's a thing. Mm-hmm. But Fallout's a thing. It's happening. Mm-hmm. It is. That's all we can say. We've about all it. tried it. We can't say any more. <laughs> we We're can't say any more. <laughs> <laughs> all under a DA. Can't say no more. Essentially, yeah, yeah. Um, 
I mean, we talked about a little bit crazy about Ike too before this week. I was like, "That's Fallout still in NDA." He's like, "Yes, I'm like, okay, we can't say nothing yes. about it." Then. It so. is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw some games play at, at some of the cons with the uh, Modifius one, and it's it looked pretty cool. Um, we talked a little bit about kind of like space kind of settings, but like Babylon Five. I know they had a game. I did not like the game system they picked for it, but that would be a fucking cool one. I had not watched all of Babylon 5 until this year. I ended up buying the yeah. complete series. At the beginning of COVID, I was like, I'm watching Babylon 5 finally. I've heard so many great things. Uh, so Holy hard to get through season one. shit, what an yeah. amazing TV show yes. that more people need to watch. Yeah. And, and if you guys don't know what we're talking about, hold on a second. It, it is uh, a feat what they did. They went through, what is it, five seasons? Is it five seasons? Jeff's got them all right there. I've got them in a, the nice, newer, little, smaller box set. Uh, than that. And it also came with the, uh, what was the spinoff? It's in there as well in all the movies. What was the yeah, spinoff yeah, yeah. That, that that they had, Jeff? Oh, God, what, what was, was it called? called? Um, they had a couple, like, one-off movies. I'm sure I, remember what they I, have the, I have the three movies, and I've also got the spinoff show that only lasted, like, a season as well. Like, it all came in one beautiful little box. I don't have all the, the big individual ones that you do. You're old school. You, you've you been there all along. You bought them when they came out, it looks like. I, I watched it on TV live when it was on. Those like, are those are, those are all on VHS. That's how yeah. that's how long ago it was. When, no, they're, when they're on DVDs, thankfully, it. but they... Uh, they <laughs> I still don't have anything to play them on. Um, just like my just like my Star Wars original trilogy on VHS right here. <laughs> right. They can't watch them anymore because I don't have that, a player, but they sit right here on my disc at all times. So. <laughs> that show was a feat that I don't know yeah. if anybody else will ever achieve because you've got, Mm-mm. what is it, uh, J. Michael Straczynski, is that his name? Yep. Showrunner, creator, essentially wrote the bulk of the series with ex- the exception of like a handful of episodes. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. he had a vision of a story from the very beginning with with a set end, a finite end. And he saw it. You see it through the progression and the arc of the characters is unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it in a TV show. Forget Game of Thrones. Forget all that yeah. other stuff. Watch Babylon 5. Yeah, just just bit of warning. Season one is absolutely atrocious, but necessary. There, there Yeah, there's necessary bits in there. There are I, ones you can use. Say, I'm sure there's probably watch guides out there that tell you which ones you need. You can skip. But mm-hmm. there are necessary bits in season yep. one that pop up like season three, season four, season five years like, oh, your mind is yep. blown when it happens. Yep. That, like just a little line that was dropped in season one and you get the callback. And you're just like, oh, my God, they so planted good. the seed back then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like and the callback is great. The character development is amazing in that. Um, I think the setting is really rich. I think it would be really open to a lot of interesting stories that you can do on the side. You know, especially like dipping um, into like the League of non aligned worlds and stuff like that and kind of dealing with what from, they're doing. From the chat here, Air Laser asked if anyone brought up Stranger Things. And what I would offer is one, there was a Stranger mm-hmm. Things box set that was put out for 5e. Um, it got some <laughs> mixed reviews. But Kids on Bikes, if kids you have yeah. Kids on Bikes, Kids yes. on Bikes is the Stranger Things game you're looking for. If mm-hmm. we go through kids on bikes air laser if you want to see stranger things because yeah. in my opinion that's that's the system that needs to be stranger things if stranger things is going to be a game that's stranger like, things a role-playing game stargate is just mentioned there stargate was also announced mm-hmm. last week it's being poured oh, into 5e it. also oh so i remember the old d20 modern one that death, uh death angel's talking about i played that one and it was all right it was all right you know like that it had everything you needed you know for like a squad based tactical kind of play but mm-hmm. uh Really, I, I think that no. setting, though, is more about what's going on in there. You know, the whole ancient aliens kind of vibe and yeah. you know, dealing with the gods and dealing with the, you know, the individuals. On the, I don't really know there's a ton of system dependency, to me anyway, in the end one of those. Mm-hmm. So did you get to your number one, Matt? Have My you... number one? Did you guys, you both did your number ones? I, I did. I have one more that I would almost so, like to see in a way but i i'll wait till after you're done i, I my, brought four or five to the table today i didn't know how many we were going to do on the list my number one i announced on twitter already so anybody who follows me would will see it already but it's pacific rim but i'll, yep. I'll throw in god okay. yeah, in godzilla that's, that's where i was going my next one was i want yes. an rpg if you have if you have the giant mech mm-hmm. or if you have the giant monsters you might as well the put the giant mechs in got there got so. yeah. got i the want a game that does that well and i don't want crunch because it's got to be over the top fun action. I was thinking on this yes. one, Savage Worlds was my pick for this. Because hmm. you can't get crunch, you can't get heat points, you can't get armor spots. Like, right. hey, you want to pull out the sword? Oh, we've we've got a sword, right? And you attack the the giant uh, monster. Pacific yeah. Rim, number one I, pick. I was gonna say Godzilla. Godzilla was yeah. where I was leaning, but you're right. 
uh, Pacific yeah. Rim would be would be fantastic. I was that, right I there with you on Pacific Rim. I, I just wasn't sure what I would want out of it exactly because you can go two different ways. Like you're saying, the, the fast action, just you know, bop them stuff would be fun. But I can also see a very gritty version of that being cool too. You know, you'd have to incorporate like losing bits mm-hmm. of your mech or what, yeah. I, what? What are they called in the movie? Uh, are you drift compatible? The what jacks are aren't they? The jacks, jacks or something? yeah. The jacks. I'm drift compatible. Yeah. Um, you could you want to you lose arms or have systems go down things like mm-hmm. that, but I don't know if you want to get too minute in the in the details or get too right, caught right, up. Right, in the Jaegers, you know? it's supposed to be like yeah. an action hero kind of setting, <laughs> duking it out with a giant monster. You yeah. remember all the like the stuff they had coming out with that movie? They were talking about like, oh yeah, the physics, man. We got a detail to these are a hundred ton mechs. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's like when they step on something, the world shakes. You're like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> sure. I love that movie. I saw that movie probably three, four times in the theater, and I don't, I don't go see movies in the theater over and over again. It was just it was a fun. A really it was like, fun movie. Yeah, like, it was a good movie. Seven, eight, nine-year-old Matt. That was like his dream movie. <laughs> like to see, you know, giant monsters fighting giant robots. I was a huge Godzilla like nut growing up. Yeah, so was I. Getting whatever I could, toys, cards, whatever. There wasn't a lot, yeah. right, Dustin? Like you, you, uh, you got the movies. You got the VHSs. There, that was, there yeah. was there was one movie place that had like four or five of the rentals. You know, I could go rent the VHS yeah. tapes and watch them. Like mm-hmm. that was about it. And then usually you got a few dinosaurs and like you had to pretend one was Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Was, yeah. I got the actual Godzilla at one point. I felt like I was like the most popular kid in school for a while. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did see that there was the, the new thing, Chris Derbs, where you, there's a, a theme park in Japan where you can zip line into Godzilla's mouth. I, I know. <laughs> there's a what? Godzilla amusement park that just opened up, Dustin. And that's what? what you zip line into his mouth. Yep. It's a giant full sized Godzilla head. And you oh, hell it. no. Oh, yeah, I hell saw, no. I saw it on my feed yesterday, actually. It was hilarious. I'll have to, I'll have to take a look at that after the show tonight. That's, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, we go. Giant monsters, giant robots. Yes. That's mm-hmm. my number one want. I know there's systems that do it out there, but give me, give me the Pacific Rim IP. Give me Godzilla. Mm-hmm. Throw King Kong. We got Godzilla versus King Kong coming out here in yep. sometime in the future. Throw it all in there. Give 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 us all of we, it. Well, what we need is we need York the same right company right. to get both IPs. Yes, so they can do Pacific Rim and then do Godzilla and just happen yeah. to use the same systems in case you want to use both. You know, like even because they can't be in the same IP, unfortunately, but just have the same parent company. Yeah, make being able to port it. it together. I agree. And port it together would be great. Yeah. I'm trying to look around my room and see anything else because that was what I just looked at. I was like, King of New York is sitting there. There it is. You know, it's basically got it all. Yes wrapped up ready to rock yeah i was leaning like that or rampage like yeah. same oh, deal yeah. right like mm-hmm. rampage would be fun like again well, another learned, game that would be available when we were growing up that was like the only godzilla thing you could have like the, game, the nes godzilla game kind of sucked mm-hmm. godzilla yeah. 2 was interesting right. rampage was good though I, rampage, I love me some yeah. rampage yeah it was real nice <laughs> Toy Story. i'm looking at the chat here chat what are your what are your top ones Toy well, we'll Story. Look around interesting oh wait i Toy Story makes me think of the old tune games that we played. Like, yeah. Well, we were like just playing uh, video game wise. We're playing Grounded, which is essentially Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, right? So, like, that would be kind of a fun yeah. little play game. You know, like, to convert That'd be that kind in. of a neat one. Let's see. What other kind of random things that you're talking about? Arcade games down, are down there now? Uh, aside from, you know, Levi and, and Co. talking about what type of crunch I am. Apparently, it's yes. toast crunch. You're crunch fantastic. You're, crunch, you're uh, Captain <laughs> Berry Crunch. Now, you know what? Now that they've said this, I do not like the crazy, song. Crazy true. Ike and Levi have to get the official T22KB Jeff Captain Crunch shirts made to put All out right. there on the. On I like the it. I'll take like it. Cr- crazy Galaxy Ike. Quest. <laughs> yeah, Crazy Ike's nice. a Galaxy Quest, but Stormship Troopers. Stormship Troopers would be Stormship good. Stormship Troopers would be kind of cool. The book. Oh, now, I, feel like, I feel like Alien would do that pretty well. Like, I don't yeah. feel like. You would have to change Alien much it's to get Starship. True, Trooper. but Alien, right. it's like once you've encountered the Xenomorph, it's kind of over, right? Like it doesn't mm-hmm. keep going. Whereas like the bug hunt with uh, Starship Troopers is just invading worlds, and you can just kind of keep that going. I yeah. think you could do a campaign with Starship Troopers. Yeah, you could. I think definitely you could. Yeah, I think the Jeff Crunchy moat needs to be like me as a Pac Man, <laughs> <laughs> just like plowing through. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah, because. Like, there's a big difference between that book and the actual movie, though. Like, so I assume you're talking about the movie with this, right? Or like the bug hunts and all that kind of stuff. So, I, I don't, Ike, what are, you tell us? You want the book or the movie? I've never read the book. I'd go with the movie. I'm doing my part. 
Yeah, I, I always thought the movie. I mean, <laughs> sign up for citizenship. Yeah, um, you got the propaganda angle in there from the movie, all that. Oh yeah, you got you got the visions, you got the scientists, you got the yeah. the grunts, like you got like the whole you know. There, you can definitely see how they can class them out like in a different like roles and stuff for for the group. So, so Chris Derp's talking about Battlestar Galactica as a five E game. Hmm. It would work. Yeah, it would work on five E. I can see yeah, that. You would need a, You would have to. You'd have to incorporate some manner of um, politics. In, yeah, politics or intrigue or cause, something. Because yeah, there's so much intrigue into it. Like it would be, it would be hard for me to want to do Battlestar Galactica Five E. There, I think there's other systems that would lend to it better, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, uh, as we were talking about before, I think uh, you know that alien system we're talking about might be a good fit for that, just because of the nature of all the paranoia and stuff. Yeah. But you would need something that can deal with. You know, fighters and you know, like mm-hmm. the jets and you know, like <laughs> sure, all that kind of good stuff. So that's that's a tricky one. And really, like games get tricky when you start to mix those things together, right? Like so, all the sci-fi genre with like the big ships and like little fighters and ground pounding and all that kind of stuff. Because like there's so many dimensions of play that you have to balance. Make so sure many fun. sci-fi games are good until you get to ship combat, yeah. and you're like, yeah. oh my god, this is pasted on. Yep. <laughs> it just and, falls and apart there. That's the case with uh, video games, too. I mean, a lot of them do well till they get to ship combats, and then it's like rail shooter. You're like, oh, that's not what I wanted. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Halo? Let's, let's yeah, see. Okay. What else we got? I mean, there, I, yeah, I guess Halo would be kind of an interesting IP. But I'm everyone surprised. wants to... Oh, I guess they've introduced other Marines, like Super mm-hmm. Marines, the idea with it. the other games, so you could play them. Yeah. But every, yeah, everybody will want to be Master Chief. Right, and that's it's another IP that's hard to it's another IP that's hard to deal with for that for that reason. Yeah, yeah. but if you look at the like original games that they're based off, like the marathon games or on the uh, the Mac, I know this because I was a Mac kid. Oh, wait. and uh, we, that, those are the only games we got was marathon basically. But you know, you had like the the rampant AIs that you had to deal with, and they're going crazy and like dealing with the four and all that stuff. It's good stuff. Lots that's of rich lore right there. there. Marathon, oh, yeah, I love Woo. marathon. Yeah, nice. I mean, Durandell, you know, Infinity, the original, obviously. That's where I got my start making video games, like levels. See, so mm-hmm. the editor in that thing? That was great. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, like, dig back. Like, because the story, I would still say it holds up. Like, I don't know if the yeah. gameplay and the graphics obviously don't hold up, but the, the actual story and the lore of it, if you all pull all the information out of the game, it's, it's rock solid. Harry Potter was the other one that. Oh. So I was going to bring to the table because I see so many streams out there trying to do Harry Potter Freaking and they're trip. most of them are using 5e rules, but I'm surprised there's not a Harry Potter TTRPG there out was, there. Someone brought up on Twitter. That was their number one pick. And I can't remember. Someone replied with a system that everybody replied. That's perfect. That's perfect. for Harry Potter. But Harry Potter is also kind of like uh, problematic right now. So people are like, oh, we don't really need a real Harry Potter. <laughs> right. No, I, I, I understand the problematic part it. of it, but there's so many people out there doing mm-hmm. Harry Potter with 5e, essentially. They're just... Just do it with Major crazy. Ascension. Make a yeah. hermetic order. You're done. Oh, I can't remember the name of the game now. It's like Schools and Brooms. It was something like along those lines. Essentially, it's... It's, yeah. it's, it's kids Potter. on bikes and yeah. Wizard Edition. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> that makes sense, too, yeah. That'd be good. Essentially. Kids on there bikes is, there is something out there. Somebody's created something to to scratch that Harry Potter itch, apparently. I don't know. I, I didn't grow up with it. I was too yeah, I old either. by the time they came out. I tried reading the yeah. first book, and I was like, I can't read this. So I don't... <laughs> it, it was, I, feel that, I feel that same way about Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Pokemon's another that like or um, there probably is a TTRPG or, for yeah. it, but it was hey, kind of past my time. So, oh, well, the Lolly Gaggers guys, are here. The raid. Hey, Jeff, welcome, Lolly Gaggers. Thanks for dropping in with a raid. They just finished uh, playing. Oh, they brought a Chuck. With Chuck! <laughs> nice. Yeah, we're talking there. about we uh, various IPs we would like to play. What's up, man? Uh, so we were talking about IPs that ne- don't necessarily have a game system out right now, or that have a game system that we're not really keen on, and what we would want instead. So if you got one in the chat, we've been talking about a bunch of stuff. So we've got, uh, you know, I, I talked about Babylon 5. We've been talking about Harry Potter. We've been talking about uh, <clears throat> Pacific Rim. We've been talking about Ghostbusters. Mario uh, Brothers. Mario Mario Brothers. Mario. Was a yeah, I still want Mario Brothers. That's the oh, first Monster one on my Ranger. list. Like, I probably should have saved it for number one. But <laughs> that everyone was- in our Discord knows I've been working on it. So I, yep. I, I felt like it would be anticlimactic. So, yeah, Babylon 5, I would... I, uh, there was one. I I owned it. 
it was not a good system. I man, I love that show. That was such a good show. One of the best. <laughs> yeah. It's up there with the wire. Yo, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh man, the wire. Good stuff. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Make a game out of the wire. You could do that. You could yeah. do it. Yeah, you could. Uh, you really wouldn't I need know a who, ton of system I, I, I for that. I don't know who would want to play it? But because <laughs> it's all depressing and people it's essentially die the world and... of darkness, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. just, just strip dark, out the supernatural, like, you're good that's... to go. Yeah, I mean, the X Files obviously be a good game system. Yeah, yeah, you know, there's a lot, you know, like, you're kind of the monster of the week kind of. Well, actually, we're playing monster of the week on Air Laser's channel, and that's it that does exactly X-Files what it be. belongs, you know, it does exactly yeah. what it sets out to do. Like, it's a very simple game system, but I don't hate it, which is amazing. <laughs> Omar for the win, that's right. That's right. Yes, you make a yes. game out of the wire. You have to tell everyone how good it is for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris Derps. That is exactly oh, how I feel oh, about the wire. Facts. Like, <laughs> yeah, Jurassic Park would be good. Uh, yeah, Jurassic Park. About Jurassic Park. Yeah, that. that might be a fun one to do. Oh, Tailspin Rescue Rangers. <laughs> oh, do that whole Disney block of shows that was out when we were yep. growing up: Darkwing Duck. Tailspin, mm-hmm. Rescue Rangers. Mm-hmm. Um, what else was there? Animaniacs. Yeah, Animaniacs. Anim- oh, Animaniacs. Yeah. Good yeah, one. Yeah. But yeah, like we used to play, what was it? Toon, I think it was. And Toon Ooh. fit all that really well. Like, <laughs> Yeah, the gummy bears, the Smurfs, you know, all that stuff. Levi yeah. might be able to tell us, was, was that Toon in that system or was that just crap we made up? I don't remember how we played Toon. But it was, <laughs> Toon just seemed like just whatever you wanted to have happen, you just said it and it just did. It might have been Levi just, just making like, stuff up as he went. Count Ducula. Oh, that was gargoyles. I totally forgot about gargoyles. Oh, Hell that yes. should be that should be up has there. gargoyles. Says, yeah, okay. Man, gargoyles would be great. It would work. It super, super light. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's what I thought. I thought it was. Uh, for, oh, man, I think I only played like one time with them, but mm-hmm. like for those games, like Toon was probably where you want to be, like for a system. <laughs> well, I mean, we, you obviously we had like a, a kind of callback to a lot of these cartoon style things from Disney with uh uh, damn it, I just blinked on the, the name of the video game. Where they mix like uh, Final Fantasy with Disney. Kingdom Hearts? Kingdom Hearts. Oh, yeah, there yeah. Kingdom Hearts. Bam, there it is. Yeah. How to come back around to it. <laughs> That's a series that fell hard. <laughs> Transformers. Yeah, okay. All right, all right. Transformers will work. I see it. A Voltron. Yeah. Basically the same place. Like Small Eye, Big Mouth would probably run that pretty well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Remember that one? Yeah. Uh, so actually, I think they even had like the the fighting team or whatever it was, or I can't remember mm-hmm. what the term they used for it, but it was like right there, ready to rock. Um, God, what else? God, it's <laughs> like I, think now, for, I think that covers most of them I'd want to see. Like, there's a few other nostalgia picks you can go for, like GI Joe or something, but like most yeah, other Joe. games are going to handle mm-hmm. like Delta Green or something. You could probably run, you know. I- so I, I do gotta, remember Exo Squad, Jeff. Sorry in the chat there. He just asked if we remember Exo Squad. I do remember Exo Squad. And that was a good show. Very nice. good show. Well, what was that one? It was mechs. It was like a mech show. But they had smaller oh, okay. mechs. It was kind of like more around their body. It wasn't like battle tech size. Gotcha. Humanoids, another one. Yes. In humanoids. I don't oh, remember that one. If we're on, if we're on, okay, Master Universe got announced already. We're on in humanoids. We've got to do Thundar the Barbarian, which is a basically it's MCC. I'd, I'd run mm-hmm. it using MCC because it's a post-apocalyptic yes. far future where everything's kind of gone back in time. But you got to give us some weird, like, well, what's the guy's name? U- Ukla the Mook or whatever. <laughs> you need, yes. like, weird creatures like that. But I'd That's love right. to see a Thundar the Barbarian show. Thundar the Barbarian. Man. God, there's so yeah. many, like, interesting things out yeah, there. Yeah, those are, those are most of the ones I could think of that, like I said, when I, I was thinking about the list today and I was like... Battle Toads. Yeah, there's well, their battle toes is making a comeback. They're like, make, yep. I think they're looking to put out another game. So, <laughs> all you have to do to capture that game is to make sure there's a side scroller race that is literally impossible. <laughs> yeah, like, you can never not, beat it. It's not a joke saying that it's literally possible. It actually was literally impossible. And, uh, man, you'll capture it right there. You're good to go. <laughs> just, <laughs> it's all fun until that, that scene, and then it's just over. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. Lolly Gaggers. You, you were on the same page there. It's a stupid ramp. <laughs> I've never beat that in. level where you're on you that jumping jet ski thing. I've never beat it. I looked it up. It is actually impossible. <laughs> yeah. The story <laughs> like, doesn't move. Or, 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 for, is that for those of you who don't know, that due to budget constraints, there were many games out there for the old Nintendo 
that certain levels were just made unbeatable because they never actually finished the two levels after that. Like this is a regular thing with NES games because mm-hmm. they just they just intended you to never get there, like at all. <laughs> it it's so good leading up to that level. Oh, like so it's a good. solid game Rock until solid. you get there. Yeah, it literally the screen doesn't move fast enough for you to make the jump. Is the problem? <laughs> so like Archer. you just can't do it. Uh, let's see, Archer, Ar- Archer, <laughs> TTRPG. Mm. Cheryl is a warlock. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Whose patron is a gypsy woman. Wow. Okay. Yeah, everyone <laughs> wants to be Pam, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's some good yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, so that covers, I think, most stuff for me. Like, I, yeah, I can't think too. of any other IPs that I, like, really want to see. Like, there's a lot of cool, like, n- like I said, nostalgia pick IPs out there. But, like, I don't know if any of them are anything I'm, like, hankering to be like, I want to make a character in that world. You know, that you like, throw money at, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I throw money at to have on my shelf and be like, one of these days I want to con my friends into playing this with me like i think like a cold war spy game would be kind of interesting i think so too <laughs> yeah <laughs> to I be mean, honest but I like it, does delta green scratch that itch i think delta yeah. green does do that that's does what it? i was gonna okay. say that's not delta anything green. about that one i watched matt run it over on his channel a few times i did follow, follow delta green. green and then bert ran delta green like true delta green for us on um notorious dmg and he said mm-hmm. it i think in the 70s uh, his so it was like a Cold War era, yeah, that era yeah. Cthulhu yeah, just means before it, yeah. Spy, God, that's a rough the combo, one I, isn't it? <laughs> the one I ran was Vietnam War era, and they were like a squad of Marines over oh, in, I mean, in Nam. And, and you could take Delta Green and you could advance it and do like a Men in Black also. Like you could, yeah, yeah. you could, you could push like Men in Black on it also. So like if you wanted a Men in Black game, Delta Green is what I would reach for for something like that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if you were doing something already in Vietnam, it'd be kind of you can even like port that over to you know Predator. <laughs> Get all yeah, that stuff in there. The, is the Alien RPG going to feature Predators at some point? Do I know? don't is know. It, that, do you know if that's coming that down the pipe? If they got the if they got the IP for that, and that's what I'm saying. Like that would be the next thing they would need, right? To make AVP, you could do it that way. Oh, God, the AVP movies. Fox owns both. I, I didn't say they were good, the movies, but I'm just saying of TTRPG. It's I'm just my saying guilty pleasure. You, I can't help but watch all those. But man, are some you, of them just, really bad? You just tell me that the next iteration of these alien games that have these awesome mechanics, I get to make me and my friends get to sit down and make predators, and we just go after the same like hive of aliens, xenomorphs. Like that would be hella fun. Oh yeah, well, because like the predator has like all that like interesting like cultural stuff to it you know like they're trying to deal with like ranking up and stuff so you kind of have like the werewolf vibe to it a little bit yeah 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 weird tech you can always have some like weird monster that you're going after it doesn't have to be a xenomorph yeah. necessarily just want its skull it's all that matters mm-hmm. Get that. And, and once they exist in the world then you know because my problem with and this is i've talked to jeff and when we've talked about ips before on here a lot is that Monty. the problem i have is is once i get into an ip like it's hard it's hard like playing chariot of the gods and playing straight with it. Cause you're like, mm-hmm. you know what xenomorphs yeah. are, you know what a face hugger is. Yeah. So, like you have to like intentionally throw your character into who doesn't know or allegedly yes. doesn't know into the situation and let it play out the way it's supposed to. Mm-hmm. And that's harder to do for me. Like I don't, it is. I don't like doing that as much. And I, I preface that adventure to the, to the players saying like, forget what you know in the movies. Like, you know what a face hugger is. I know, I know you know what an alien egg looks like, but when you see the game, react like your your player right seeing mm-hmm. this thing for the first time you're gonna need to forget all of that out of game knowledge otherwise you won't enjoy it mm-hmm. right you know, oh, egg. i'm not going near that that's basically <laughs> yeah I'm, yeah I'm, I'm i get near, near it i mean players by na- nature are paranoid mm-hmm. you know in a normal homebrew setting they're paranoid you give them something that they recognize as bad and you know and it's it's hard to get players to do it sometimes so that's my only problem with dealing with ips sometimes is i hate i hate dealing with that yeah. level of player knowledge I, that's yeah. why i like to homebrew my own stuff you almost have to take like the prometheus angle where they they kind of tangentially touch on the things which will piss I off like, some people but i know. like the split angle where i don't mm-hmm. tell them it's alien and i have them make characters and they just start playing and then like they find out it's alien later like split did when it's like you didn't know it was part of uh of another show like another movie until the end like that's why i'd rather go that angle with it right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you didn't know Prometheus was a not prelude to aliens, prelude to aliens, clearly, um, uh, then it was easier to enjoy. 
But if you had hopes of it being something that hooked in, it just didn't do it well. I, it, it, uh, it's a prequel. It tells you how that ship got there in the first Alien movie. To a different planet, uh, not to the one that's an alien. Are you sure? I am positive. Okay, it's been a while it since is, I watched it. It's in the same system, but it's not, okay. not the same one. All right. It's, uh, that's a, there's, it's there's not a my favorite. That was just a mistake. Put it that way. <laughs> Do you think it was that was just a mistake? It was, it was intentional? intentional? Okay. Yeah, they're, they're both like references to, to Bible verses. Uh, and then they just did a different one. And there was a whole thing in the making of that movie where they were like, it's going to be a pre prelude. And then they were like, it's not, it's not going to be one. We're not going to do that because there's problems with that. We just decided to completely scrap it. And then we're just okay. making a different movie. Oh, but it also is sort of connected. Uh, all the same things are in it, but it's Space not. Space jockey, the ship. Do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Avatar mm -hmm. is another one that, uh, yeah. I'll be honest, Avatar is one of those IPs that I'm surprised didn't get a TTRPG just because mm -hmm. of how famous that movie is for being like the top grossing box office until like what Infinity War, one of those movies knocked it off. Endgame, right. one of them knocked it off. But, um, but, just because it had that mystique to it for so long. And it was a really good movie. Like I'm surprised it didn't get a TTRPG or something, but I think just because they waited so long to put anything else out with it. But then again, I say that, but there's an entire section of Disney world dedicated to it. So yep. like, you know, they're, they're keeping that IP alive out there in Disney. And if Disney keeps you alive, then you can put anything out. Like, Facts. Last Mouse Airbender. Everything. Good stuff. That could be a, an interesting one. Yeah. No, nope. Airbender. I'm saying in chat here, they're saying mm -hmm. Last Airbender is the original Avatar. No, Dances with the Wolves is the original <laughs> Avatar. That movie's been done. Yeah. Avatar is nothing new. It's called Dances with Wolves with Kevin yeah. Costner. And then it was yes. Fern Gully. And it was and something then it was before Avatar. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Same movie. Same premise. <laughs> the Titanic and DCC funnel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Works. <laughs> oh man it it's just james cameron just down underwater just... if it's a dcc funnel it was not an iceberg that sunk that ship the iceberg is just the story that made it back to land <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's a lot uh, more tentacles and monsters involved in the sinking of the titanic if it's a dcc funnel and then oh <laughs> uh, that's funny <laughs> we get to get our friends over at the salty funnel to make that thing it yeah, was essentially it. one and you know that would work Straight out, I would assume. Yeah, yeah, that would work real well <laughs> for what they're doing. Yeah. Man, yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of fun stuff out there we can kind of tie into. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, Titanic was... Two, Jack's Revenge. <laughs> 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 Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, who framed Roger Rabbit? In the video? <laughs> oh, someone mentioned that. I think, or I think someone mentioned that. That is my favorite Disney movie. And I know, so I get some strange looks when I bring that up. People are like, what are your favorite Disney? I'm like, who framed Roger Rabbit? I think you have to be born of a certain yep. age and era to get that. But it is mm -hmm. it is a crazy really movie. Good. And that would be fun to play in, to make it a tune be. in Toontown and go between the real world and the other world and have the, mm -hmm. uh, oh, what was the, what was the asset called? That, that, uh, oh, fuck, I don't remember. Um, that I don't remember. I, remember the, I can't remember. I remember what anymore. it looked like. I remember the container it was in. Sure. Jeff's in the chat. He'll know from the yeah. Lolly Gaggers. Um, I can't remember what it was called. But yeah, doing a, a RPG and Roger Rabbit the would dip. work. It would, like the Toon, dip. like that system. The, the dip. dip. Thank you. That's See, I Jeff dip. know. Um, Poor shoes that, just going in there. I think everybody weird. had a crush on Jessica Rabbit. That's just, that's just what that was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come on now. That's <laughs> true. Oh man! You'll, like I, you'll never see an animated character like that again. <laughs> no, 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 that, not a bit. That era has passed. <laughs> yeah, if it was five a year, right? It would just be nothing but birds trying to hook up with Jessica Rabbit the whole time. <laughs> this never ends. <laughs> you don't have to. You don't. You don't have to play five E to make that true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Would there be any other system that really fit that really well? Is there any? Like, obviously, we're talking about like Tune or something like that. But yeah, say. So, uh, Whenever I get too cartoony, I, I go back to Tune immediately. Tune, it's just, yeah. It just lets yeah. you do it. All the crazy, zany things, it just lets you do them without having to work real hard. So Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Just, that, that's just the easy one to go back to. Maybe it's too easy to go back to, and I'm not thinking hard enough. But if you wanted to kind of take it at a different angle, you could, like, again, this is another place where, like, 
maybe a port of mage or changeling could be adapted to kind of fit that maybe changeling i don't know that's it's kind of like the banality rules and stuff don't seem like it would fit well for you have to scrap banality Mm -hmm. you think so because like some of the the, being out of tune town you sort of become more human boring you lose your color Uh, maybe i guess maybe but Mm -hmm. (laughs) i don't know Obviously, people were talking in our Discord, I think, earlier about uh, Pirates of the Caribbean kind of style stuff. Yeah. I don't like those movies, but I could see that being fun. Yeah, (laughs) Black Sails. If you like Black Sails better, Uh, I enjoyed Black Sails a lot. So it's essentially Treasure Island for those who aren't aware. Right. As far as IP goes. (laughs) Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo. You should be a gang solving mysteries? (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's like every it's episode. Kid, I, I hate to say it. It's kids, kids on bikes. bikes. You just yep. happen to have a van. It's kids on bikes again. Like you Talking just go back to kids yep. on bikes for that. That's all it is. Like, <laughs> Man, that's some good stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Like, there's a lot of interesting things out there. I think. Uh, yeah, Monster of the Week would probably handle Scooby Doo pretty well. Yeah, Monster of the Week could mm-hmm. definitely be Scooby Doo as well. Yeah, that would be another system that would do it well. I've, so. yeah, I've read that. Well, People even suggest Monster of the Week for Hellboy would work. I, I've never played it. It's Fate. Is it Fate or Powered by the Apocalypse? Which one is uh, it? I think it's Powered by the Apocalypse, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So it's uh, it's real simple. Um, there's not a ton of character progression in it. So it's clear it's like designed for kind of like a short scope kind of game. And, yeah. you know, there's a couple different... And this one, Monster of the Week, it's like your couple different uh, classes, I guess you would call them. Jobs, you know, whatever professions, maybe. But, like, you have... Like a real simple stat line, like I think it was like four or five stats that you either have like a plus or a minus yeah. one, a zero, a plus one, or a plus two. And then you have um, like you roll a d6 and you add that number or two d6 and you add that number to it. And there's, you know, a certain window where if you get in there, you succeed, but there's a complication or if you roll above, it's a total success. And then you have like a couple little powers and that's about it. It's hmm. real straightforward. You know, like all the I'll combat is out. just like a couple damage ranks, you know, like, oh, you take three damage, boom. Okay. You take two. So it's, it's pretty neat. And like, as far as I could tell with that one, the DM or the GM or storyteller or whatever never actually rolls. Yeah, so it's I like, think Powered by the Apocalypse is like that. You're just kind of facilitating. Yes. You never touch dice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's some other nice things that are like the earlier talking about. Like when you fail a roll, you get experience. So like, there's oh, always something kind of pushing better you. Yeah, so like failing? you learn from your mistakes. You know, so like, I like that. you screwed up. Something bad happened, but you're going to progress your character. So, like, there isn't an obvious bias to do one or the other. I played a super complex game called The Burning Wheel, Mm -hmm. and it it was like that. You tried things just to get better at them. But it was like a long process. (laughs) Yeah, I like those ideas because, like, in any game where you gain XP by failure, as you get better at a skill, it's harder to raise the skill by nature. So, like, that's that's a good mechanic. Call of Cthulhu is like that as well, the latest edition. Mm-hmm. If you fail yeah. a skill, that's where you get to plug points into at the end of the session. Mm-hmm. Yep. But if you pass, you're really good at something, yeah, you're not really going to get be- much better at it. Mm-hmm. Which is fine, you know? Like, if you do it mm-hmm. every, right every time, you're not challenging yourself. Go find something harder to do. <laughs> Just good stuff. Yeah. Delta Green, you're right, Jeff. Lola Gager, Jeff. That Delta Green does the same thing. Delta Green was originally a Call of Cthulhu. I don't know if it was like an offshoot or kind of like built off of it and it's since become its own thing. So yeah, it's, it's similar to call of Cthulhu. Interesting. <laughs> Killikins Island. Uh, <laughs> like just every stuck on the island trying to find a way it. off every, every, uh, session. We, we, we did that with 5e e for a while. We were on an island trying to get off for quite a while. So yeah, quantum, quantum leap. leap would be a hard quantum one. Quantum leap. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody mentioned sliders earlier too. Sliders would be good. Mm-hmm. You just be a group going from world to world. You have a yeah, lot yeah. of fun with that. Yeah. Yeah, that would be. Are we just going through every show that existed back in the day? Because now we're getting Love Boat. I know. (laughs) What would you do? Love Love Fantasy Island, Love Boat, (laughs) Jeopardy, (laughs) Captain Stewing. Welcome aboard, sir. (laughs) Oh man, then you'd have like games people play just because they hated the ending of a show. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I wonder what you're referring to. Hmm. Could be a few things, but yes. (laughs) (laughs) I have no idea. God, I'm glad I never watched that show. Um, but yeah, yeah, we are at that time, aren't we? It is. Uh, it we're, is we're nearing the end here, believe it or not. Our our two-hour time slot with you is coming to a close. And I know we're going to have a fair amount of plugs here because you're a busy, yeah, busy man. Yeah, that's true. I got a couple so. of channels that I'm doing stuff on. 
So why don't you tell us a little about what your schedule looks like, what what you got going on both on Zweihander and on Grim and Perilous Plays. So tomorrow night, I am doing uh, Alien RPG, Destroyer of Worlds, over mm-hmm. on Twitch.tv, Grim and Perilous Plays. I've got uh, Jeff from the Lollygaggers, who's in the chat here right now. Uh, he's he's playing that game and a whole bunch of other folks, um, Chuck and uh, a few others. And uh, we're on, like I said, Act 2. We're going to wrap up Act 2 tomorrow. Uh, so come join us, see the craziness if you want to see it in action. On Thursday on the channel at 9.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, we are going to be doing Hellboy, the RPG. So we'll have the uh, the exclusive first look at that. You'll see it in action. You'll see how the game plays based off the quick start. So that's very exciting. Nice. Uh, and over on Zweihander RPG, twitch.tv slash Zweihander RPG, I'm going to be uh, starting up a new group on Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're going to roll up characters live. We're using the Grim Perilous method. And we're going to start the adventure, The In-Between, which we've run before. It's a very uh, heavy horror-based adventure. Cool. So we're going to start that with a new group. And on Sunday nights, I'm running another adventure. Uh, it's, we're using the monstrous ancestries in it. So everybody's a, an orc, a Skurzak, a Grendel, oh, or an Atlan. Yes. Um, and we're doing stuff. an adventure by the name of the Night of the Vivimancer. And it's not written that way. So it's been fine to kind of like convert it. And everybody's now like orcs and Grendels and stuff in town rather than humans. Um, so that's been fun. So that's on Sunday night at 9 p.m. on Swayhand RPG. Very cool. All right. Now, um, and the in between was written by Sean Van Dam, correct? Correct. In between the, and Night of the Vivimancer, both. And he, he, he wrote both of those. He's yeah. a friend of the show. He's been on here, mm-hmm. uh, both himself, and he also does Spotlight for us for Battle of the Pistolero. So you can check out those. Uh, the DM who ran that for us is the guy who wrote these as well. So. Um, over here on a tabletop to keyboard, you'll find uh, me and Jeff here, of course, every Monday night at 10 p.m. on the Wisdom Check, where next week we're going to be talking with um, Joker, who mm-hmm. is a gamer from Chile. So we're going to be talking about what gaming culture is like down in South America in Chile and what games they have down there. And he happens to be a big fan of the World of Darkness and in particular Mage. And he wants to talk about Mage next mm-hmm. week. So uh, tune back in next week. We'll have Joker here with us. I didn't see him hop into the chat tonight. He's usually around for this show, but I ha- yeah, he ha- has not made his appearance yet tonight. He must be saving it all for next week. So hopefully we'll get to see Joker then. Um, <laughs> tomorrow night we have uh, Bardic. Is he Bardic knowledge this week or is he doing the workout show this week? I, I was get, I think trying to make sure I got it straight. Show? I think he's going to debut the workout one. I'm not positive. I think he's on debuting that. his workout show. Cameron mm-hmm. will be here tomorrow in his usual time slot where Bardic mm-hmm. Knowledge takes place, but now he's going to alternate. Bardic Knowledge, his music uh, creation show, is now every other Tuesday. And on the other Tuesdays, he's now going to be doing an exercise show with Air Laser. I believe Air Laser is going to be there. Yep, she's confirming it in the chat. <laughs> tomorrow will be the exercise show. I'm not sure if he's given it a name yet. There'll be names, logos, and stuff attached to this thing soon enough. I guarantee it for you. Um, that'll be tomorrow. 8 p.m. Central Time, I believe, is when that thing will be kicking off. Mm-hmm. Uh, exercise like DM to art will be there uh, also tomorrow. Yep. It's gonna be Levi's that. doing DM to art. Has he finished Veil? Are, have you finished no. Veil, Levi? Or are you still working on Veil? Well, well our, our, our DM is, uh, has been working on, on DM to art. He's been finishing Veil, um, working on Veil, uh, which is a commission he's doing for one of our our longtime viewers still working on Veil, he says. Mm-hmm. So you'll get to see more of Veil tomorrow for DM to Art and then stick around for Cameron's new workout show with Air Laser. Mm-hmm. Wednesday, it's Pathfinder 2nd Edition, 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Jeff is going to be back at the helm for more Pathfinder action. Jeff, what can we look forward to on Wednesday? Oh, well, the, the group is finally going to be getting into the big, scary capital city of the Hobgoblins where they're going to be making new friends, finding a new place to live. And trying to integrate into a society not their own. So we'll see how that plays out. And Maybe I got my mask for my place. character. Dude, this thing's so creepy. Oh, be awesome. what? <laughs> yeah. Don't ask me where so, about it. <laughs> I was going to say, what's the sex shop? Did you pick that up? Uh, Wish. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> it's used then if it comes from Wish. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> no. So we'll have, uh, we'll have that um, Wednesday night, 10 p.m. Pathfinder mm-hmm. Second Edition. If you're interested in seeing seeing those rules play out and how it works, um, that moves us to Thursday, where we have been playing Grounded on our video mm-hmm. game night. That is the video game that we picked up for at least the near future. 
Um, I know it's Jeff, Tim, Cameron have been playing. Maybe Clint will be there. I'm sitting this one out. I know Levi's sitting out because he's back to work now. So Yeah, we, we may jump around a different game. I don't know. We'll see. We, we, we pick up a different game every now and then. So our video game night is always in flux. There's World War Z for a while and a lot of Seven Days to Die. So if you're used to that time slot, you come over, you hang out with us. Um, right now, they've been playing Grounded. It's been a fun little game for the, to watch. Yeah, we've been screaming our, bugs, yeah. Friday is our night off around here. Air Laser usually streams her D&D game, or it's the mute, um, Master, Monster, or, of Monster of the Week with Jeff. Yep, so I'll be over there, and uh, it's a good time. It's been fun. 7.30 so month, p.m., yeah. I think, is the time, Eastern time. Mm-hmm. That's right. 7.30 p.m., Eastern Daylight Time, Friday on Air Laser's channel. You'll see Jeff there. Yeah. Saturday, this Saturday is not Everstorm. It's an off week for Everstorm. Which means that Sunday, however, my horror and Huttenberg game resumes. It's chapter five, Bugs Are Us. And the <laughs> party <bugs? laughs> the party is is going to uh well, hey, the chat named this episode, not me. Okay. So if you got problems, right. you take it up with Jay Bruce. He 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 uh, redeemed it. So <laughs> that Jay <so>, Bruce. <laughs> that Jay Bruce. But he was there, he saw what was gonna go down. So he, he named the episode. We'll see if you guys do it or not. But okay. um if you've been if you've been watching, they're they're toying with um, what they can do with Witchstone, and all sorts of fantastic <laughs> machines are being created. They the, the horror in Huttenberg they they did a heist and they got huge caches of Witchstone from it, and they didn't know what it was. And so they've been figuring out all these different philosophers and everyone who's making all these different machines and everything else. And they're trying to wrong. figure out what they want to do. And due and, to Witchstone, uh, one of my players rolled forty five corruption in one game. I told them that story. <laughs> Careful. I, Careful what you I do with the witchstone. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're learning very quickly that it's it's nasty stuff sometimes. So um, that's that'll be uh, Sunday, five p.m. Uh, yeah, here at here at uh, here on TT Two KB. You you can catch the next episode of that. Absolutely, and so that's uh, a, our busy week. <laughs> and we got we got a lot more guests coming up here on the Wisdom Check soon. Like I said, we got Joker coming. I'm in talks with uh, Chuck there from Defenders of Cobalt to come talk about their new design. They're going to come on probably and talk about that soon. We got uh, D. Daryl Wagner in a couple of weeks, who's the first third party publisher for Dungeons and Dragons. He's going to come talk about the old days of being a third party publisher, oh, how things cool. got started. So he'll be on in a couple of weeks. We also, next month, September 14th, mark your calendars now, we have Luke Gygax coming to the show. That's right. So oh, he'll nice. be here in a month, a little over a month, or less than a month now, actually. Yeah, coming so, up quick. So that'll be here before you know it. Um, in the meantime, if there's anyone else out there you want to be on Wisdom Check, you know where to find us. You have TTRPG topics you want to talk about, products, we're here. Absolutely. That takes us, I think, through most of our most of our plugs here at the end of the show. Jeff, do you want to talk a little about your dad's work and his stream I, schedule? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I have no idea what his stream schedule is because it seems to be in flux at the moment. But my dad is an artist, a uh, fantasy artist. He does uh, sculpting. And he makes mostly dragons and all kinds of awesome stuff. The links are all right there for you. He is doing live sculpting. Sometimes he's working on our D&D characters. Sometimes he's working on stuff for uh, his shop. Sometimes he's working on things for conventions. Uh, like he did some stuff for the online uh, conventions that's been going on recently. And uh, it's really good stuff. So you can find him online doing these uh, art shows live. And uh, he's dabbling with all kinds of new stuff. He's got like a 3D printer now he's fiddling around with. He's got... Uh, you know, his dragons, he's got his giant sculpts of, like, dragon heads or, like, you know, full wall mount kind of things up there. Uh, it's good stuff. And uh, so go ahead and check it out. He's got a YouTube channel with some of his old videos of, like, how-tos and uh, kind of time lapses of some of the big pieces. Um, and like I said, he's he's up there on Twitch. He's got a Patreon as well. So if you want to get discounts on things, you want to see, like, the real behind-the-scenes stuff, you want to see his jewelry, all that kind of stuff, uh, it's all up there. And... Uh, it's pretty cool. Obviously, I'm a little biased, but it's good stuff. It's good stuff. It so is go good stuff. Out. I saw it at Gen Con last year. I wanted to win that damn dragon head, and I didn't. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. It's still That's time. Right. <laughs> and uh, speaking, speaking of Gen Con, um, yeah. just a real quick before we go outro, um, we just, me and Matt, got to be part of uh, Gen Con Online. We were doing a lot of work with uh, Zweihander. And I know my game session that I got to run was hella fun, so I want to thank Matt for helping uh, bring cool. me in. Um, to get oh, to be a part you. of that, and uh, your time, yeah. So I, I hope to get to do it again at another con sometime in the future. Um, Anytime. It was it was a it was a hell of a lot of fun, and I, I I can't wait to get to do it at an actual con. 
I know. <laughs> like, online was fun, but I want to do that at Rocon. It's, it's, so. it's a different experience. I went a little crazy last year at Gen Con. I'm not going to run as many games as I did last year, but um, yeah. yeah, it's a different experience. But yeah, thank you for volunteering your time. Like you, you and all the other volunteers, you guys made that. There's no way we could have done that without you. So it was, you're very, very much appreciated. Did you get your, your thank you package in the mail already? I did. It's right here. I got it. Nice. I got, I got my dice and uh, the bookmarks are in the book, so I'm not going to pull all them out, but they're, cool. they're fantastic. So good. Super cool. Yeah, it's awesome. People are still able to do all this stuff in the capacity that we can. So it's fantastic. And uh, yeah, I want to say thank you very much for coming tonight. It was, uh, it was a good conversation yeah. as always. It's a good community. Thanks out here. for having me. It was great to be back here. Maybe maybe I can uh, you know do a third a third uh, stint on here. <laughs> a three beat. Well, I want I want to be like your your Alec Baldwin. You know, or just keep coming back. Right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> just always nice. here. Nice. <laughs> we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. So uh, thank you, good. chat. Uh, we are going to try to locate a ray target, I assume. Uh, let oh, I found that. one. And while he's setting that up, I'm going to throw us to our outro. So thank you all for coming. And we'll see yep. you. Where are we going, Dustin, before I cue We're going to go say hi to a good friend of mine, Spooky Sprinkles, who's doing some art tonight. Fantastic. Well, we'll see you over there, all. Bye-bye. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs>